start screaming. Ooh, this is where we go. Ooh, ooh. All right, hello, hello, and welcome to oh, Art Battle oh, Portland. Uh, we are at uh, a, a new, or sort of new to us, uh, venue in Portland at uh, Jaja PDX. Um, it's going to be a fantastic show. If you've not already checked out the artists, make sure you go over to artbattle.com slash AB2402. Uh, we're seeing the inter artists introduced now, but we don't have a direct venue, uh, direct audio from the venue here, so we're going to have to uh, be a little bit imaginative, but don't worry, we have some incredible Imaginarium uh, uh, talented people with us here tonight. We have um, your hosts for this art battle tonight. We have Brittany, Brittany Sylvester. Hi, Brittany. Hi. So happy to be <laughs> well, here. Yes, we are thrilled to have you. Brittany is um, an art battle uh, uh, North Pacific Northwest competitor, has competed at a number of events, um, and even gone a little further afield. Um, we also have uh, Janae Valesco. Hi, welcome, Janae. Hello. Fantastic. Also, an accomplished uh, uh, art battle, uh, art battle Seattle uh, artist, um, and uh, maybe even a couple other art battles in there. And thrilled to have them both with us. This is the first uh, double artist uh, hosted uh, live stream hosted art battle, um, and uh, we're just going to have some fun here tonight. And thank you so much for joining us. Um, and uh, well, there, I'll leave it to you, Brittany, uh, Janae. Uh, uh, take it away. Feel free to uh, let us know uh, who, who we're seeing. Uh, on these easels and anything else uh, about the show tonight. Like Welcome, Cass. Awesome. <laughs> well, it looks I'm, like they're introducing uh, the I'm artist, and I'm super excited. It's uh, always so nerve wracking the very beginning idea. during the countdown. Um, Janae, you've done this as well, so you know the feeling. Absolutely. Those first few moments before you start painting. Uh, they feel like they last forever, honestly, at least in my experience. <laughs> they do. Now, uh, Ryan it's, uh, it's interesting how we cannot hear what's going on, so we're going to have to be a little... A little... It's all of our other senses. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying, to see, I'm trying to see if I can log into the app, Art Battle app. Um, it's Art Battle International, if anybody out there wants to join in. It looks like you can... Um, you know, you can... What is it? You can view the artist's work, and I believe you can also do the, um, what is it, the auction at the end, too. Okay, here we go. So round one at easel number one, we have Liesl Meisner. And then easel number two, we have, oh, is that Stasio? The winner of tonight will take our last spot. And it's Dr. Oh. Yeah. Are you on the app? Uh, no, I'm not, but I can't really see. I'm, I'm just going based off of the, uh, the video feed, but there's Mackenzie. I've, we've both done art battles with her before. She's great. She's amazing. We'll send the round order to your phones, uh, uh, ladies. Thanks so much. You can see the easel numbers at the top of the screen and uh, we'll get those uh, round orders over to you shortly. Perfect. Thank you. Right, she's that born artist. She has since branched out into color, crystal realism, see. woodworking, and lights. <laughs> but her favorite medium is. Looks pop. like that might be Molly Gregory. Ooh, That's going to be my guess anyway, since they just showed amazing. Mackenzie. And Molly and Gregory is at easel number six. So her palette is looking great Gregory. with those big blobs of paint. All Looks right, like she's got a lot of purple, color. some white, maybe some black in there. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I also love how at this point absolutely anything is possible for these canvases and each artist has some kind of idea of what they're going to start with. They have no idea what they're going to finish with and the audience has absolutely no idea what's about to happen. I know, I know. And it's it's so funny because you try to prepare to paint something within 20 minutes and you can practice all you want. But once you get there and you're like painting, so many things can go wrong or so many things shift. I know my personal painting, it's um, things always are changing regardless if I have a source or not. So it's always interesting to see like what's going on yeah absolutely oh, it looks like we're getting started. Started. big bold brush strokes to start always yeah it's I good know. to get much coverage as possible and focus on getting those big blocks in and then really 
getting down to the nitty gritty and refining towards your last few minutes. Mm -hmm. It's interesting though, because that's how I've always approached it. And it looks like that is, oh gosh, I can't see that easel number. So we'll that's see if we can one. figure out. And oh, is it? he's doing some kind of maybe a skyline. And this is, I think this is Anastasio. Mm -hmm. They've got some really beautiful green. I just love bold colors. I think that it's so, it just attracts people more. Mm -hmm. um, just, it touches your eye and it wants to keep you engaged. Especially this, it's it's such a, a shape coming through with different colors and, and so much texture already that it, uh, it automatically grabs your attention. Yeah, and Anastasio, their face or their Instagram, um, they do a lot of abstracts, but they also do a lot of um, like Picasso faces, very inspired by, by Picasso. So I'm excited oh. to see what they have to do. Ooh, awesome. look at this one. It's looks like they've got a, there is maybe some... Mm -hmm fish with some flowers yeah some aquatic flora <laughs> and flora and fauna <laughs> i love i love artist palettes oh i know right it's the best thing <laughs> she's just going in there too and just sketching out getting down her her composition and looks like she's just getting everything placed in there we'll see if she adds color mm-hmm this one has a lot of blending going on, it looks like. Maybe? Yeah, it's pretty... It's hard uh, to tell with the, uh, the lights. Mm-hmm. Ooh, some Ooh, adding a lot of water. Mm-hmm. Uh, easel number four. It's interesting how different artists approach it differently. You know, before when we were first starting, there were big sweeps of color kind of laying in the, the background, but then others will do kind of a sketch first and then build off of that. Yes. And so right now we're watching Ryan Hill and I'm actually super excited to see him work. Some of his oil works are just amazing. Yeah, I'm excited too. Ooh, maybe a blended sky. Is this, this is Mackenzie. Like Mackenzie. Mm -hmm. She's always fun to watch. Yeah, I love her process. She's always so laid back. And I always tell her that she seemed very laid back and chill the whole time. And she says that she's, nothing, she's not. But she's <laughs> not, no. <laughs> but she does. She she pulls it off well. Mm -hmm. But that's also another component about Art Battle that I love is that, you know, you're also, you're not just painting and creating something, but you're putting on a show for the audience. Right. Um, and Mackenzie, she's done so many different amazing things throughout like the different art battle events. I'm super excited to see what she has going on. Absolutely. And it Ooh. looks like this is Molly Gregory. It almost um, looks a little skull like, but can't quite tell yet. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Um, very like almost futuristic type mm -hmm. i love the colors uh yeah the I do too. The teal is just gorgeous mm -hmm. she looks super laid back as well like she's just going about her day i know when i'm doing it i'm always like frantic and like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> me too she's got a lot of coverage so far oh wow nice oh look at that this is lethal Oh, wow. She's definitely doing some sort of a landscape. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to see, like, just with one go around the easels, how far she's come. Yeah, how different it is already. And how there's already texture and, um, I don't know, space in the mountains. That's wild. Oh, wow. That's gorgeous. All the colors. Mm. This is Anastasio, and it looks like they are doing maybe sort of an abstract it'd be i'd be interested to see if they do put anything over top of it um but i love abstracts i am an abstract realism or just straight abstract painter so i just mm -hmm. watch how other people have approaches to abstracts it's always fascinating to me yeah i agree abstract art is fascinating and it's 
in its own. You're right, though, as you talk about your work, abstract realism. That's such a great way to describe your uh, your body of work. That's amazing. Ooh, this one is going to be oh. awesome. She's getting some color on here, and this is Cat Cat Templeton. Starting in on the color, looks like it might be a koi fish. If I had to guess. And it's she's be got a... that beautiful little portrait in there already. Mm -hmm. out. And we're back to Ryan. Looks like he's doing some sort of a, a landscape as well. Mm -hmm. Might even be a mountain in there. I think I yeah. see. Oh, did you see that cool little brush flip? That was nice. I did. <laughs> Again, putting on the show for everybody there. You know, sometimes it's it's so fascinating to see artists in their process, but then when you cut that process into down to twenty minutes, it's it's amazing what people can achieve. It's insane. Okay, so we're back to Mackenzie, and it looks like this is going to be also some sort of a a landscape type. At least that's what it looks like for me. It looks like there's like that mm -hmm. big white thing is a moon with the dark sky, and she's adding a ton of brush strokes with to get that forefront in um I, do you see that too like with maybe yeah. like that little path of water i don't know mm -hmm. if that's what it is, but that's what i'm assuming it is right now it does look like water and it definitely looks like the moon in the sky yeah it okay so this is super cool I know. it looks like sort of like a gas mask type of thing with like a skull but then it looks like the teal and the per like the teal going across with a like purple streak through it might be hair. I'm not sure, mm -hmm. but yeah, I was I was about to say the same thing. Definitely gas mask, um, but the the colors. We'll see. We'll see how it progresses because that's why I love the colors. I love the colors too. I always love when people put like bold colors next to each other. And it just, I don't know. I think it just draws people in. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. The texture on this mountain is already astounding. And this is, let's see. I think this is, do you know who this is again? We're gonna, we're about to see I think it might be cool. Is this easel one? Uh, Thanks. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, it's that's incredible already. And you guys can also, um, for anybody on the internet, if you guys are watching live, you guys feel free. If you love a piece, if you just are so inept, like captured by it, and you just want to purchase it, there is bidding online that you can. Go ahead and bid for that piece. Um, there's a flat rate shipping, so that's a great deal because these canvases get pretty big, um, especially during their last round. And I believe, I'm not 100% sure, um, it's been a while since I've done an art battle, but I believe you can also vote online as well. So if you have somebody in mind that you're watching and you just want them to go to the third round, um, make sure you get your votes in. Yes, I do believe you can vote online. And this is gorgeous. I think you can vote on the app as well. Maybe not. Yeah. And um, if you don't know where to go, if you're watching online, it's just artbattle.com. That is such like a serene mountainscape, landscape. Mm -hmm. It's so peaceful and calm. It's very pastel y. Yeah, it's very like soft. Oh, with that big brush too, of making those big strokes, it can kind of sometimes have the look of um, glowing light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, while you were talking about the voting, we passed Anastasio's canvas and oh my goodness, it is gorgeous. Oh, here's Mackenzie with Mackenzie. a figure. <laughs> That's great. This is so great. I love it. I wonder if she's doing Bigfoot because we're in the Pacific Northwest. Mm -hmm. That would be like such a cool piece to have. <laughs> yeah. 
my kids always ask me to paint them like just random things like Bigfoot or aliens and <laughs> yeah, probably my sign. but that's <laughs> so great. Oh, it looks like we're just Ooh. about at the halfway point. Yes. And we're look, looks like she's getting some highlights in there. So it's going to really start to give it that definition and that depth. Mm -hmm. I always tell people like, don't judge anything until the final touches because like those last highlights really make a piece pop and it really gives it the depth that it needs. Absolutely. And the lighting on it too is just, it, the form on this is just excellent. Mm -hmm. And the, the swooshing hair is such an interesting... Uh... It gives it a lot of movement. Mm -hmm. It gives a lot of movement. Ooh, this is so gorgeous. Wow. I can't believe she's done that in just... Uh, neither minutes. can I. Look at that mountain. Gosh. I know. <laughs> then there's gorgeous. a ton of texture on there. It's mm -hmm. She's gotten so far. I wonder what she's going to do with the rest of her time. Maybe just get little details in, but it looks like she's got most of her composition in. Mm -hmm. Getting that forefront in to give it the depth. Gorgeous. And this is Anastasio. Wow. That's gorgeous. Um, if we can see the canvas again. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Ooh, big white. I love it. I love when like artists put a bunch of color down and then they start adding those whites in. Mm -hmm. And this is back to Kate, or a cat, I meant, excuse mm -hmm. me. And she's getting some color on the face, that little portrait there. I love this. It's like surrealism with the big flower, the portrait, and the little fishy on top. Yeah, and I love the, the play on color here with the sort of cool tones pretty much everywhere else except the fish that is a vibrant, you know, red, orange, yellow. And I love the like washy drips as well, like mm -hmm. where that purple is just under the fish. I hope she leaves that because I am a huge fan of thin layered washes with drips. Me too. They add so much atmosphere. This Speaking is, of atmosphere. I know. <laughs> this is so gorgeous. I do hope, um, and let me make sure that I'm correct. Yes, this is Ryan, and I do hope he gets some darker colors in there just to give it that contrast that it needs. Mm -hmm. Kind of ground um, it. Yeah, but it's it is gorgeous. Makes you want to take a deep breath. Mm hmm. And this is Mackenzie. I don't think I've ever seen so many like landscapes in one art battle round before. But yeah, I this is it's definitely. Uh, definitely heavy on the landscapes this time but I'm here for it I don't know if that's what you were about to say but I did that, I did <laughs> yeah. that. this is great adding the trees on the edges there it's interesting that the uh the figure I, I think it is Bigfoot I think you're right I um, I, I was just gonna say I really hope it is Bigfoot <laughs> I uh, might bid like on it if it is <laughs> looks like she's adding that fur on there this is like so like mystical and gorgeous it's got like like this mystery to it mm -hmm. and i don't know it, it's like capturing me i don't i i you know like when you just fall in love with a piece but you have no idea why mm -hmm. i don't know it just, yeah and you really like, have to stand there and just wait to see if that answer comes to you i think it well, maybe maybe I'll mention it on, on our way back here because here we are again at this gorgeous mountain. Yeah, so this we're back to Liesl and she's adding so much texture within those clouds and I love texture. I think it's it just like gives the viewer something. It, there's so many different levels to it that you're just you're constantly moving your eye, but like there's a clear focal point, but the rest of the canvas is leading the way. So you, it's not just one focal point. Absolutely. And this is Anastasio and their abstract. And like there's definitely a lot of texture on their canvas yep. as well. Mm. 
just going to say that and we've got about five minutes left. Um, I, I love their abstract. Um, sometimes I get worried because colors can get super muddy together and I'm mm-hmm. hoping with all of their colors on there that it doesn't get like that. Cause that can go from like a great piece to not such a great piece very fast. So there's mm-hmm. like a fine line with abstracts and mixing so many colors together. Definitely. And continuing to work on uh, the whole of the painting rather than maybe focusing on a spot to add further mm-hmm. details. Oh, this is so, so gorgeous. I wish we had more time there. And we're back to Ryan. It's like we're starting to get into some of those, did some he just of those shadows. It? Oh yeah, I sure did. Oh, I can't, I can't. Oh, this is, oh, okay. He might be doing like a reflection. Mm. So there might be like a play on like a lake or a body of water. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you might be right. I love when people flip the canvas because it's such a, a way to like show off and perform. Right. Oh, oh little Mackenzie. Stars. Oh, Mackenzie. I I love her. And <laughs> I too. love Bigfoot. And if it's not Bigfoot, <laughs> I'm gonna call it Bigfoot anyways because I want it to be Bigfoot. <laughs> I think I think it is. I think it's safe to say. I it's also what, great. <laughs> yeah, I love what she did like with the stars and like there was a little streak to the left of it that was gorgeous. Ooh, mm. look. Oh my gosh. Look at, and she's just like going for it. Uh Uh-huh. I, I love it. Okay. What I was going to say about this was that it, the colors I feel, and there's something about the whooshing hair too, that um, while the gas mask is sort of like dystopian, there's something about everything else about the painting that feels hopeful or like almost beautiful. Right like that the chaos and destruction was exactly but it's like a calming peaceful almost Mm -hmm. when it Mm -hmm. when you it would it shouldn't be in that type of a situation and this is liesel and i don't know look is she okay she's still pitter pattering with it i thought she might be done oh my gosh that's gorgeous i know i i want to see the canvas Oh, they look like they're having so much fun. Mm-hmm. I also love the bedazzled. Um... I am obsessed. <laughs> yeah. That canvas is gorgeous. I, I wish that um, the camera person would get up close to those details because that's how I love looking, especially at abstract work and textured work too. I love uh, once it's dry, obviously, like actually feeling that texture and looking at all of the detailed brush right. strokes. And it looks like he's just got. Or, okay, so this is, I believe, let's see, where's my cat? This is cat again. I'm so happy she's leaving that wash there. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. Is that hair? Like the whole? I'm not not sure. (laughs) We're back to Ryan and this is looking so great. Okay, so I know I said like, I wish he would put in like some darkers and I still kind of do, but it looks like he's going for like sort of like a misty foggy look maybe. And I don't know if it might just be the camera work, but if it's like a misty, then it totally would work. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it looks like Mackenzie, do you see that like super bright heelish streak on the left? behind her hand right there uh-huh oh it's it's gorgeous i don't know what it is but it's gorgeous oh it looks like it's like more it might be because there's one on the other side too so it might just be like uh reflections off trees in, in like the background mm-hmm. maybe with the moon shining on them mm-hmm. i <laughs> know what it is about this piece but i know right i love it it. it. especially the green that she added at the bottom there it's so it's again like almost mm -hmm. i think it brought it together Mm -hmm. more and we are down to 25 seconds so these artists are rushing to get their last little brush strokes in the last all their little details in 
So if you, remember, if you guys want to go on and vote, make sure you go to artbattle.com or you go to the app. Um, and you can also bid on these pieces. Like I said before, it's a flat rate shipping and we are down to three, two, one and brushes down. Gosh, that was great. Amazing. And I'm as the artist, <laughs> yeah, go ahead, go I'm ahead. always blown away by what other people can do within 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I've I done this so many times and I know you have as well. And like, yeah. whew, it's a, it's a real win. It really is. And at the end there, when you finally put your brush down and really Let's feel the weight back. of what you've just been through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you're like, whoa, I can't believe I just did that in mm -hmm. 20 and then there's the the following um, few minutes of walking around and looking at all of the other amazing paintings that were created yeah. within the same amount of time. It's it's mind blowing. And I'm hoping that they will go back around and show the canvases again, um, just so we can kind of get like a final a final look at them. They should have on the app um, updated pictures uh, from, so they'll have like a few pictures in between while they're working on it and then a final picture. So if you want to really get those close details and look at it, make sure you go over to Art Battle on the app and you can vote and also bid on these paintings. And it's always, I always tell people, this is the best place that you can go to get um, original artwork and even though it might not be perfect because it's done in 20 minutes like it's still such an accomplishment and it's part of the experience of being able to go to an event like this or watch it online and then own a piece that somebody's done in 20 minutes and a lot most of these paintings are just they blow me away every time I see them I, I totally agree. And I am currently looking at the paintings on the app and I would recommend that anybody listening do the same thing because, um, you know, the, the live stream video just doesn't do these paintings justice. And on the app, you can see them a little bit more in their full color and they are all amazing. It just, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> There's not a lot of words other than amazing. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. And if you guys have never been to an art battle, a live art battle in person, I mean, if you love it online, you guys have to find a local art battle and watch it in person because it's such a, I always tell people like, it's such an amazing atmosphere. And to be able to like walk around in a circle around all of these artists and like peek into their, their process and how they do things and how they lay paint down. It's an amazing experience. It really is. And it's, um, there's nothing quite like it, I feel, of going around and watching those paintings come together where, I mean, I, you kind of get that sense here as you're going around with the camera, uh, seeing how much has changed, but there's something about being in person that you'll just, you'll never. And I also feel as an artist, um, as an artist participating, there's something about the energy of the people there too that always influences the art. Exactly. And like I said before, like um, I had never seen so many like landscapes within one round and it's kind of fitting. Like we're in Seattle and so we're still within the Pacific Northwest, but Portland I feel has like I don't know, like they're Pacific Northwest as well, but do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I feel like it's like a different energy there. And um, so it's interesting to see like what's created at different locations. Like I've done a, mm. a live commentating for Art Battle Chicago and the art there was like so, so cool and like different than anything I've ever seen live at Art Battle Seattle or Tacoma. So it's always interesting to see like how the environment and um, where you are within the world, kind of like you said, changes the views on what's created or the, at least the artist's views on what they're gonna create. Right, I, it definitely, um, it's, it makes sense that it would influence 
the, the artists themselves and change what it is that it's created. Exactly. And I don't know about you, but for me personally, I like to try to stay within like what I do within my studio work. Um, but I do try to play into what I think the crowd is going to love as well. Um, so like I do like super bold, bright fluorescent colors. Um, but I try to stay within what I normally would do. It, are you the same? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like um, I feel like I'm super confident with landscapes or anything like that. So I I try to stick to that. And same thing, I try and use really bold colors and um, anything that's going to be sort of grabbing. I also try and include at least one little trick that, you know, the showmanship is a, is a big thing. Right, right. I do the same. I think, like, I've done gold leaf before and I've put tape. Oh, really? Yeah, that was like at um, regionals last year. But it went better in my studio than it did live. <laughs> That happens sometimes. <laughs> it didn't dry as fast as it did in my studio, and I probably should have like told myself pay attention to like temperature variance, and mm -hmm. I include that within my prepping. <laughs> yeah. So, but like I like we said earlier, it's always things change, and they can change very quickly doing something live. And even though you've practiced it, it it could totally change, and you can end up with something completely different than what you plan to do. Absolutely. Do you, when you're getting ready for an art battle, do you practice a lot or, yeah. you know, so when you go up to the canvas, you know exactly your plan? Yes, um, for the most part. But like I said, there are hiccups and it's the same with studio work as well. Only with studio work, you have time to adjust, right? Like, mm -hmm. and for personally, I can take, I could, I can paint a painting for like 20 to 60 hours and I usually work in a lot of layers. And so the way I approach art battle is basically doing my same process, but condensing it as much as I can. So it still looks like my studio work. It still has like some of the same components. Um, but that's tricky because in my studio, studio work, I do, like I said, a lot of layered work. So I have time to dry in between. And it's kind of, um, obviously you have 20 minutes in art battle. So it, it's really hard to achieve the same look but um i do i practice a lot a lot a lot and maybe i shouldn't practice so much if i ever do it again <laughs> yeah. i was just i was just gonna say i i started out practicing a lot a lot where i would really get dialed in on my process yeah um, but at some point i started to feel like that led to less flexibility when it actually came to the the live event um so instead i started not practicing too much like i would practice enough to have a basic concept of what i was going to paint and how i would approach it so that it could you know hopefully get done within that amount of time um but not too much so that i could still improvise a bit and and have more flexibility with with what i was trying to achieve Oh, look at them. So sweet. This is like the part where if you've already gone, like if you were in round one, you're like, oh, phew, it's uh -huh. over, it's done with, and round two is still freaking out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is the part where the round one um, people go to the bar and grab uh, a nice little refreshment just to, exactly. just to take a deep breath. <laughs> This is probably also where round two is grabbing a refreshment and trying to get rid of those nerves. <laughs> yep. They might be grabbing their paint at this point. That's true. Setting up their See. palette and mm -hmm. getting ready to go. That's always nerve wracking for me as well. It's because like I plan out my colors in a head so that I don't throw up a rainbow mm -hmm. <laughs> and just get like all the colors. So I try to have like a color palette in mind and um, I'm always like, I'll put everything out and I'll get my palette ready. And then they're about to call me out and I'm like, oh no, oh no. Did I, did I get all my <laughs> colors? Did I forget one? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's Ooh, so funny. You. I feel I'm like, go ahead. 
I, I feel like I love using all of the colors, which might not be the greatest thing, but like, I don't know. I love there's all a, of the there's colors. There's a tasteful way to do it, but me, I will like, when I get all the colors on my palette, it's like I throw up a rainbow and it's not tasteful. <laughs> you can do a tasteful rainbow. It's very possible, but for me, it has to be a very well-planned, tasteful rainbow. And at 20 minutes, I am not good with that. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. So it looks like they're setting up for round two. I'm so excited to see these artists coming up. And if you guys are still with us, um, remember to go on and vote for your favorite artist during round one. And don't know... Janae, can you see if, because I'm not on the app, but um, is voting open for, or is the auction open yet? Or is that towards the end? Let me take a look. Nope, the auction is open. So, Ooh. yep, you can vote and you can bid for round one paintings currently. Nice. Make sure you guys get your votes in. I know the artist always appreciate every little bit of help they can get and um it's always a nice little ego boost to to know that people are voting for your work mm -hmm. it looks like every single painting has been bid on at this point that's awesome i yeah i just love that i know that's amazing I'm so excited to see the winner. I know. I can't even, like, every single painting from round one was so spectacular that I cannot even say with any sort of confidence who was going to be moving on. Well, who was your, your favorite? Oh, gosh, it's so hard to say. Okay, so... <laughs> Personally, Anastasio's, the, the the live stream did not give this painting any sort of justice. It oh. is absolutely gorgeous. And I don't even understand because I would have created um, Mud City if I was trying to do that. So like right. major props. Um, Liesl's mountain is spectacular. There's, you know, glow from the sun coming on there. Every single one. Cat, her use of color is so great. And like you said, that wash in the back is just phenomenal. And there's some colors, just all the colors. So much texture too. <laughs> Every single one. I'm so amazed. I'm going to have to get my Art Battle app going. I think I, I had it because I've done them so many times. Um, but I got a new phone recently, so, oh, yep, it's just have to re-download it. Mm -hmm. So what's your favorite part about competing within Art Battle? Mm, you know, I would have to say that the uh, meeting other artists, other local artists, um, and talking with them and hearing about their process and seeing what everybody has planned and you know talking afterwards about the experience of art battle i don't know it's just it's so great meeting and talking with all of the other artists yeah i agree that is definitely i i think when i first did it so Susanna had like friended me on instagram like a year before i did it and um actually i think it was pre-covid and mm. i was like oh wow like who's this artist and um <laughs> and then i saw that she was doing art battle and i was like oh that looks cool and it was like when i was just starting out getting back into my art career and stuff and um and then i saw it was 20 minutes because i was looking and i was like oh maybe i should do that and then i saw it was 20 minutes and i was like just kidding <laughs> i could never create something in 20 minutes <laughs> And then post COVID, she had actually reached out and asked me if I'd be interested. And I didn't know who she was before, right? And um, so it's like a total stranger. Like we followed each other on Instagram and she's like, asked me if I'd be interested in competing. And I was like, ooh, I don't know. Like <laughs> before I said no, but um, I actually, and I ended up doing it and it was life changing. I was like hooked from that first mm -hmm. round and i i was so in love with it and it like you said it's so great to like 
just go out and be able to connect with like people who love art, not just like the other artists, because meeting other artists is awesome. Like I will never turn down meeting artists, but to get that and also to get like a community that is there strictly for the arts is just like the chef's kiss. Absolutely. Yeah, most definitely. It's, uh, I also love when you're competing and maybe you did the first round and then you're going through, you're walking through and watching the second round or vice versa. Um, it's always fun to hear the different things that people are saying about the pieces, especially if they, you know, don't necessarily have an artistic background or, you know, it's just, it's cool to get different perspectives on things like that. Exactly. And it's always interesting, like, with getting huge crowds to seeing like how many different people appreciate different forms of art. So like, like you said, like every painting has already been bid on for round one. And that just goes to show that every, like art is in the eye of the beholder, right? Like mm -hmm. it's no matter what you paint. And I believe this, I've always said it, that every painting out there is made for one specific person um, within the world. And it's so true because there's so many different people will connect with different paintings than what you might connect with, right? Like mm -hmm. you and I connect with different paintings, but it's all still so great because everybody's getting supported and that's just like what I love. And it takes away like that elitism mm -hmm. in my opinion of like, this is what art is. This is what you should like. This is this is considered fine art when in reality, like every person has a different perspective on what art is and what, you know, draws them into it and what they connect with. So it's super cool. It's like, an, it's such a great atmosphere. And I just love art battle for this specific reason. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that it kind of uh, reminds me of how sometimes if I let's say I make a body of work and there's a couple in there that aren't really my favorite you know they're kind of like they're they're good and I enjoyed them but you know I definitely have a favorite piece but then somebody will come up and one of those paintings will be their absolute favorite and it's just it just goes to show you that like um I don't know that maybe as artists we're not meant to judge our own work and like it's like never our responsibility to like say if something is good or not because it is really in the eye of the beholder so i know i'm always like are you sure that one are you yeah. like that's the one you like <laughs> so it, but it's so true because something that i judge that i create and i'm like ugh, like the whole process was difficult i made so many it, i just fought with this painting so much and i just i'm not in love with it compared to this painting right that came so mm -hmm. easier that i just connected with more but then when you hear the feedback on that that piece that you struggled with is just like validation that hey like you're doing something right and you know people are connecting with it and it doesn't matter like how you feel about it because somebody else is going to think it's like a masterpiece. Absolutely. This is really nice. This uh, painting that Bernadette is working on. I really wish that the light wasn't um, like washing out that whole upper corner. I'd like to see what's going on. Oh, yes. Yeah. So this is our opening painter. And I think they changed it since when I, because the last one I competed in was um, regionals for Washington State last March. Um, and I do believe they've changed it. So the opening painter starts in the beginning and then they take a break and they come back in between each round. So there's always somebody painting, which is, I think, awesome. I think that's a great switch to make. Yeah. It I would love to be an opening painter again, because like I said, I work in layers mm -hmm. <laughs> and I like when things dry. Yeah, I was going to, I was actually going to comment on that when you had said it the first time, because I'm the same way. I work in multiple layers. And so when I'm trying to approach my painting for 20 minutes, um, I try and decide what it is that I want to be on that outermost layer. And then or like maybe see if there's parts that I can build up layers in, but other parts can be um, just sort of, I don't know, I, what am I trying to say here? I guess I feel like a lot of times, even though I'm working in layers, previous layers will get pretty covered up because of, you know, a change that I'm making or something. So 
I try and decide where those areas of coverage are going to happen so that I can plan for them and just go straight to that outermost layer rather than. um, That's a good way to approach it. I don't think I've ever done that just because like in my like the way I approach paintings, it's like kill the white, kill the white, like get rid (laughs) of the white background. Right. Like even if you're putting white over it. Right. Like my own practice, I've always been taught like obliterate the white do you got to get rid of that white canvas background but in something that's done in 20 minutes like you should kind of approach it with like doing your focal point first and not I don't know because for me it's always hard like I always and I I don't I don't follow that advice I kill the white (laughs) and then everything's (laughs) like wet and runny and you Mm -hmm. it's hard to build the layers when you there's no dry time so but what we just saw in round one, people have just, like, I'm amazed by like the texture and the amount of paint that people are able to get on. Um, so it always fascinates me watching other artists process and the way they paint and the way they lay down their paint mm-hmm. to achieve like the look that they're they're going for. Yeah, absolutely. And this is such a gorgeous painting. It really is. I love her. Um, She's been, Bernadette has been working on portraits using acrylic, or I'm sorry. um, All right. I think it is. No, alcohol ink. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Her work is absolutely gorgeous, especially some of her recent work. It's just, it's phenomenal. I mean, it looks amazing. I, um, I use a lot of alcohol ink in my paintings, but usually it's the, the kill the white. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and it helps me get like a composition going and like if I don't have like a source that's like this is this is what I'm doing so most of the time I do it with like my abstracts because it co- side up like sort of guides me into a composition and lets me know where the painting wants to go and wants to be but alcohol inks are super fun they are a little tricky but to do a portrait in alcohol inks that's amazing because they're so finicky Mm -hmm. She does it sort of kind of like how you said abstract realism, where she starts out with kind of a base of the alcohol inks and then builds into them with some other medium. I don't know if she's painting on top of it or what she's doing. Maybe she's drawing. I'm not sure. But um, she kind of sketches out a a portrait within them. And yeah, it's wonderful. Um, I I love that. (laughs) technique because it really integrates your background with your subject and it kind of makes it feel like it's flowing throughout instead of just like here's the background here's the the subject so Mm -hmm. um it is the true definition of abstract realism so uh, i wanted to ask did you ever um get the app up and start bidding on the uh (laughs) on the bigfoot it's working i want to but my oh no i know i don't know why but um, i just want to warn you mackenzie's um bigfoot is up to a thousand dollars what yes no people (laughs) don't bid for it i wanted it just kidding go ahead and go ahead and bid (laughs) who am i tell to tell you not to big bid for bigfoot oh wow that's amazing good for her yeah Absolutely amazing. So proud of her. And Mackenzie's been on, she's been doing so many art battles. Like she's been to every one that I've been to, mm-hmm. I believe. Um, my first one ever, she was there and we made it to the, the third round with each other. And like, she was the first person that talked to me when, and I was so nervous. And when I get nervous, I'm like, oh. I should like shut everybody out. So I'm like, don't talk to me. <laughs> People probably think I'm like, really mean, <laughs> but I'm not, I just get so nervous. Um, but she like came up and talked to me and she, I was like, okay, I'll vote for you. And she's like, I'll vote for you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I and from that moment. I just, I loved her for like making me break out of my little, my little shell and my little Mm-hmm. recluse you know it's funny that you say that because like I said how you know talking to the other artists and meeting everybody is the best part but I think that all of us myself included we all kind of have that like 
you know, what is it? Sort of recluse, uh, don't talk to me. I don't know, I'm nervous. I don't know what to say. I'm losing my mind right now. And you want to chat with me? What, 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 what do you want to chat about? I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to get in my right brain, people. But sometimes you just need those people. And I just love those little extroverts. Mm-hmm. I, just, I just love them because you need it to like just to get you out of your head and yeah. like for me I really do like because otherwise I just sit there and I stress and I'm like okay step one step two like mm-hmm. apply <laughs> this color next it's this color then use this brush and then we're doing this and then like so right. like, it's so good for those those little extroverts to get you out of that and just to kind of be present in the moment and I think that that's usually when you make your best work um is when you're just enjoying yourself because when you like for me if i put too much pressure on myself and i'm like overthinking my process it never turns out right you're kind of white knuckling the brush like this is gonna be great and then it just the whole thing is just too tight and you can see that anxiety on the canvas yeah that's me i feel attacked right now It's so true, though. It's true. I would like to do another one. I I said after regionals I wasn't going to. Oh, really? Yeah, I was... um, So, like, I just got done saying that, like, I'm a person that puts a lot of pressure on myself to do things perfect and be the, you know, be the best. And, like, I don't... like I shouldn't have that mindset, but I think it goes back to, like, my childhood and, like, trying to, like you know, be what I was supposed to be and be this perfect thing and not mess up and which is ironic because my studio work is is meant to show like the imperfectness and being imperfect is is the most beautiful you'll ever be. And um, but yeah, after after regionals, I was really hard on myself and I was just like, I can't do it anymore. The stress is just killing me. And um, I told I told Susanna and Dave, I was like, I don't like if you guys need help outside of competing, I'm your girl. But please don't <laughs> ask me again. Oh, my gosh. That's, but you know, I, I get it. <laughs> I've been wanting to, though, because like every event they're like, hey, this. and I'm like, she, they're like, apply, apply. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I want to. But uh, it's it's a uh, it's hard. I I. I Last year was extremely busy for me, though, so I really wouldn't have been able to. But Mm -hmm. um, I've kind of slowed down just a little bit. So I'm maybe going to contemplate getting back into it. Yeah, it's it's definitely I, I definitely relate to that feeling of wanting to do things perfectly. And um, the the most recent art battle that I participated in, my final painting, um, as you know, personally, you know how we were saying the worst work, somebody always like connects to it. Maybe not always, but I don't know. Uh, I didn't like it. My final painting, I was so upset with it. And like to be fair, I didn't plan a whole lot. I I tried to do kind of a rendition of a painting that I was working on in my studio. So I felt like. I had such a deep understanding of the painting already that I didn't need to practice a 20 minute version of it. And that was (laughs) completely false. (laughs) Like I really should have done at least one practice 20 minute painting. So um, it just doesn't come out good. And ever since then, I've kind of also been a little iffy about doing it again. Like I just needed a break. I just (laughs) need to walk away from this for a second. (laughs) Don't ask me to ruin me myself. <laughs> uh, but it's not, it's like, I shouldn't think like that because, like I said, like my first couple of art battles, even though I didn't win my first couple that I actually competed win, I w- like fell in love with it. And that, I think that's interesting for like artists. You either love it or you hate it. Um, and I definitely loved it. I just, uh, I think it was the regionals that messed me up because I was like, I'm going against so many amazing artists. Like you were there and we competed against each other, not in the same round, but um, I just remember there was so much talent and so many amazing people there that I I definitely psyched myself out for that one. Yeah, I'm trying to think, was that the one, um, gosh, was it at the Palladium? 
It was. Yeah, uh, Cameron won, and then he went on to win nationals. <gasps> That's right. Oh my gosh, that was such a good one. Yeah, and then Frida was there, and Charles mm -hmm. Burt was there. All amazing artists. Um, mm -hmm. Frida Rob actually Carlos. Uh, live for the Seahawks draft. Yeah, Rob was there, the dragon painter. Everybody knows him by the dragon guy. Um, <laughs> yeah, I and you know, like the people who I thought, and like never bank on myself. I like, oh, I'm gonna win, right? Like, right. you hope for the best, but you prepare for the worst. But like, even mm -hmm. people who I thought were gonna get into the finals or like win, like didn't. And I was just like blown away. The, the, oh, that, that, right? but it's regionals, it's supposed to be tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, it was pretty crazy. The paintings, I remember, all I'm so gorgeous. Regionals n next month because there is, I mean, just because I'm not competing doesn't mean I'm not following, right? And mm -hmm. there is going to be some pretty awesome artists. And yeah. I believe are the, the, I believe the winner from tonight is going to compete in regionals as well, right? I, I would believe so. Yeah. Because it's still within the, the same what the same season i suppose yeah gosh that portrait is just gorgeous yeah it's stunning the the softness of the colors is just and just amazing. the excellence of the actual portrait itself is is just awesome mm -hmm. oh okay let me see. oh i got my app to work yay there you go well now mackenzie's painting is up to 1200 so you know <laughs> I'm I'm so happy for her. Yeah, that's amazing. Dude, the Bigfoot is so cool. <laughs> and it's so true. The pictures on the app are so much more clear than the video stream. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, you can really zoom in and, and get the, the texture when even when you're zooming in. It's it's actually pretty great how good quality these photos are. Right. I, I, I love Kat's piece. I love just like the surrealism of it. And it feels like it has a lot of depth because it has those washes in there and it has the texture. So it looks like there's, you know, there's certain things that are fading back and there's certain things that are popping out. Mm -hmm. And there's something about the, the bold black brushstrokes that are so, it's so striking. It's so I great. Love Ooh, ooh, we're starting round two, everybody. I'm ooh. so excited. I can't wait for this next round and to see what is going to be created. All right, let's see. Looks like, shoot, where are we? So on round one, we've got Susie Q, which is adorable because my daughter's name is Susie and a lot of her friends call her Susie Q. Yep. So I'm not going to be biased just because <laughs> the name <no. laughs> And we've got uh, Kareen on easel number two. On easel number three, it looks like we've got Shiza. I believe that's how you pronounce it. If I'm not saying it correctly, I'm super sorry. Um, canvas number four is Nikki. And canvas number five, we've got Erin. And on canvas number six, we have Juju. I was prepared and I wrote them down. <laughs> I think I might actually take notes too as we're going so that I could maybe try and memorize who we've got and what they're painting so that I'm not like trying to look back at the list like wait and try and look at the easel number two and you know we'll see if we can be a little more organized this time <laughs> ready for it amateur <laughs> yeah right <laughs> our poor audience are like give me Morgan back <laughs> <laughs> I am super excited. Man, 20 minutes when you're like watching it feels like forever. I, I, I remember doing an opening painting when um, in Seattle and it was at the, you were there, you did the video. Mm. Mm. Oh, the collective. The collective, yeah. Like walking around, like I was doing like the pictures for our battle app. And, oh yeah. Um, 20 minutes feels like a long time when you're not painting. <laughs> 
totally. it, it, it like goes by with like it feels like it's two minutes yeah would you say you have a preference to paint in the first round or the second first oh really i would first. definitely say the second no i hate going in the second round i loathe it i've done it <laughs> once and i was like freaking out and then and then if you you know make it into the third round if you're lucky enough to get into the third round you have to like clean your palette really fast and you have to pump out all your paint really fast and it feels like a long break in between at least on these lives and when you're in the audience but it's not mm -hmm. it, it is not and round one already has a clean palette so they just have to lay their paint out so yeah i definitely 100 percent love a good point <laughs> Though I was in round one, round two one time and I made it to the third round and I just remember being so frazzled, like, oh, oh I clean your palette. And I bring my own palette and because I use a glass palette oh, and yeah. it's usually pretty big and um, I don't have the luxury of just like taking the plastic off mm -hmm. like the other mm -hmm. artists. So for me, I, I think it's just extra pressure. Oh no, so you're just like feverishly scrubbing at your palette, like get it off, get it off. I probably use like an entire <laughs> bowl of toilet papers, which is not good for the earth. <laughs> I told you I get stressed, mm -hmm. I can't help it. Yeah, sounds like you should take a couple deep breaths just to center yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Rub uh <-huh>. my ears. <laughs> I, I will say, one, Go ahead. if you're in round one and then you finish and then you can kind of like get like a breather and then it's like so much more enjoyable to watch round two. Like I remember being in round two and like going around and watching round one, but feeling like my nerves were still there and like going back and checking to make sure everything was like lined up and I had everything I needed. So it wasn't mm. as easy. But everybody has their own preference, right? Totally. Well, now that you say that, I'm trying to think why I prefer round two. I don't know. I think that if for round two, you're, you got to be a little on the crazy side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I might be because maybe there's something about, um, you know, if you make it in or like if you're round one and then you make it into the, the final round, um, there's kind of like a, a rise and fall and then another rise of adrenaline where uh -huh. if you're round two into the final round it's kind of all stacked together maybe that and like conservation of energy or like inertia i don't know <laughs> i know it's i don't know i don't know why maybe i'm just like like i said like an overthinker and over planner and i just want everything i i also feel like i have to like be in control right it's hard for mm -hmm. me to let up so yeah. Oh, do you see this? They're uh, taping the canvas. That's interesting. Can't quite tell who this is, but Let's see, is that easel number one? Yeah, it is. So easel number one is Susie Q. I've done that before. And let me tell you, the tape does not stay. Oh no. Oh, we've already started. Oh, yeah, because you can't tape or anything before everything starts. No, you so. have to have it. Wow. Oh, I just love already just like the dark, deep, rich colors. So saturated, so beautiful. Mm -hmm. This is um, Corrine easel number two. I love when the artists dance too while they're going. It's so I good. do. <laughs> do you ever dance while you're painting? Um, Spice Girls was on <laughs> at the end of my round, um, and it's actually the art battle that I won, and I was just like in the zone. Oh, that's great. Um, I was definitely bobbing my head to Spice Girls. How can <laughs> nice. you not? All right, so this is uh, Shiza, and it's like it might be portrait s Definitely. And let me see, I'm trying to find, um, she's got some super, super cool stuff within her Instagram and she's super um, drawn to like the raw natural beauty of the world. And he says that her artwork reflects that. So I'm excited to see what she's gonna create tonight. Mm -hmm. 
just kind of mapping out where, oh, she's gotten some color already. Mm -hmm, already. It usually takes me a while to map out my, like my composition and like where everything's going to go. And then I can really get into it. So I just, I'm, I'm always amazed by like people who can just throw down the paint without being a planner like I am. <laughs> That's so funny. I feel like I am really intuitive with my style. I can be, but like I said, art battle is stressful. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I guess art battles is its own. It's its, its own, own ball game. Circus. Mm -hmm. It's its own little little space in life that just throws you for a loop. Yeah. But it's it's actually great because um, I have done stuff, and what I've done has inspired studio work. So, mm -hmm. does that ever happen to you? Oh yeah, definitely. All right. So this is easel number four, and this is Nikki. And she has some pretty amazing realism on her Instagram. So I'm super excited to see what she's going to create tonight. I don't know if she's going to do some kind of an imagery. So this is easel number four. She has some pretty amazing realism on her... What happened there? Can you still hear me? That was I can still weird. Hear you. I was just going to ask if you can hear me. I heard myself talking and I was Yeah, like, oh. that was really strange. I was on... I'm not really sure. Oh, you know what it was? I went back on the um, on the website. Janine. Um... <laughs> okay, this is Erin. And she's got some super fun colors. Wow, this, this is very cool. It's very, um, you know, big shapes. Interested to see where this goes. And she is enjoying herself, dancing. I just love those big, bold marks. Mm -hmm. and oh, you know what it kind of looks like is a spiral. I see like a spiral forming with the dots getting smaller as they're going. Yeah. You remember like those like little worms that we used to make mm -hmm. in school? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly uh, what I thought of. Yeah, I love it. And I think she she is an oil painter and art teacher by trade. So I'm oh, interested nice. to see what we have going on for her. And this is Juju on easel number six. And he um, he's from Chicago, it looks like. And he is considered a bridge between street art and expressionism. Uh oh, did, there we go. It looks like he's got some writing up there. I wish I could see what it says. Mm -hmm. I love when artists put messages within their paintings. Yeah, I do too. The Portland. Something. experience mm -hmm. i love it these colors are super like um he's got some neutrals in there and with the bright pops i think that's like such an excellent way to go mm -hmm. and it looks like he's got um sort of like they're like picasso -y faces but then also is it like uh like Basquiat, is that, I believe, it's like a cross between those two. Mm, is that an artist? Mm-hmm, like um, olden days. Mm-hmm, olden days. <laughs> uh, my, yeah, I mean. One of the masters, maybe. <laughs> I was born in the late 1900s, so yeah. I could have talking. <laughs> oh, gosh. Ooh, ooh, oh, this is this great. This is so great. I believe this is Susie Q. Oh my gosh, I, that deep, rich, purple, magenta, what is that, mm. like? Is she painting with a spoon? It look. I was just gonna say, it looks like it's spoon. I've seen people paint with, um, I wonder if that is a spoon, because I've seen people paint with, uh, like, you know, those, like, makeup brushes that are kind of like, they look like spoons, but they have brushes 
like it's not a spoon, it's like a brush, but they have like handles like spoons. What? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know, know what you mean. mean. They it's look like kind of like mini hair brushes. Yes, yes. Okay, she's <laughs> got a real brush now, so. Uh, oh, contrast. That looks like a fluorescent pink and if that's what it is she is speaking to my heart mm -hmm. i wonder if she's gonna turn it into like a galaxy sort of thing at least that's what i'm getting it from it so far be super cool yeah oh yeah look at that mm -hmm. micro oh yeah i bet it's gonna be like sort of a galaxy yeah okay so basquiat's not he was born in the 1960s and he died the year I was born, so 1988. But um, Juju has a lot of his work is sort of the same style within that. Mm. Ooh, we've got, is this a jellyfish? Jellyfish, mm -hmm. That's fun. It is fun. I love that background. I do too, and I love how like, it's all the same colors, just different um, values, it looks like. Like, mm -hmm. uh, she's going to put sort of like the same, some darker spots within the jellyfish to make it look like it's sort of transparent. Mm -hmm. Look how pretty. Oh my gosh. And we are like just close to being halfway done. Oh gosh. Okay. Well, that went pretty fast. And she is doing such a great job. Looks like she's enjoying herself too. Yeah. Okay, this is Shiza. Definitely getting some of her, what it looks like would be like somewhat of her normal work, comparing it to her studio work. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping we get a full shot of it, but. That's super cool. Here we go. Nice. I really like the, the very saturated colors. Yeah, it definitely helps things pop. And I'm wondering if she's going to leave the background white or not. Um, like I said earlier, I usually try to kill the white mm -hmm. <laughs> at first. But it always amazes me, like, when people don't do that and they can still pull off like just this awesome painting that I'm like, oh, I wish I could do that. <laughs> but we've got a lot of like complimentary colors in that one. So, ooh. Oh, wow. Little octopus. Isn't it funny? Because in the last round, we saw a lot of landscapes. And at least on this round, we've got at least two, you know, uh, sea creatures yeah this I is love interesting why do i feel like we like i feel like this was not here the last round or like the last um no this went by like completely different and this is uh this is nikki so we definitely didn't see any of this before Crazy. and I, the compliments on this are awesome because it's not like just red and just green. It's like the variations of those colors that mm -hmm. I think really pulls it off. Like the green is more of like a teal and the pink is more of like a peach. Mm -hmm. And they comp the, the two colors complement each other very well. Exactly. Ooh, it even kind of goes into like almost a... Um, not fuchsia, but like uh, mauve, perhaps, sort of purplish red down yeah. at the bottom there. Mauve and like magentia. Magentia, yeah. <laughs> I think I just made that word up. It's not actually a color, but. You know, I think it works. <laughs> and this is back to Erin. So it looks like you were right with the spirals. Huh. And it does give it a ton of depth because it looks like it's, you know, like spiraling out to get bigger or spiraling mm -hmm. smaller. So adding some of those highlights on there to kind of 
make those circles look like they have more definition. Yeah, with the um, with the unblended highlight, it kind of gives me um, beads. It looks more like beads, but once once the blending happens, then they look a little bit more. Um, you know, no, it's interesting how the highlight, just such a simple thing like that, can change the perceived texture of something. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. I always call it my ugly stage when I don't have highlights on my painting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, don't look at it yet. Because <laughs> it is, it ha it's like every painting has an ugly stage and the highlights is seriously what makes a painting. Ooh. Oh my gosh, this is so great. <laughs> Ooh, and um, so it is Basquiat that he has a similar si style to and I, I love this. It, oh my gosh, I was wondering where he was gonna go with this at the beginning, but this totally makes sense now. At first, it kind of looked like um, like it could be headed towards a skyline, mm -hmm. but like this is type of thing. Yeah, uh huh. This and it is still kind of has that feeling, maybe of like businessmen or yeah. <laughs> Gosh, this is so awesome! This is so awesome. The Portland Two experience. So I missed the two last time, mm -hmm. but that's super cool because if that's what this painting is for, I've only been to Portland a couple of times, but they've, they've got some pretty big buildings. So that could be a play on like a cityscape with like the faces and representing different things within different people within the Portland area. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I only have five minutes and 30 seconds left. Wow. This round went by a lot faster than, than the mm -hmm. last round. I agree. But maybe it's just because the, the camera person is spending so much more time on each individual canvas, which I appreciate because mm -hmm. when you get back around to it, you're like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh look at like, like, where's look Waldo. At that. <laughs> oh, that's I so awesome. This painting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. And look at this one. This is back to Susie Q. This is oh, wow. so cool. Oh my goodness. This is gorgeous. I'm always amazed when people can blend colors like on top of black. I'm just like, oh. how? That whole that whole area was completely black and yet there's colors in there that look so vibrant and sh glowy. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't believe when she, oh, she's the one with the tape. So we didn't get to see really what, I hope you guys can't hear my kids in the background, but uh, we didn't get to see like what she started with. So I would assume she might've put the black on first after the tape. Mm -hmm. And then, but I could be wrong because we don't know. Look at those colors in there. That's just, it's fantastic i i love it i'm i'm deaf i don't man it's gonna be hard to pick a favorite for me personally mm -hmm. in the round Ooh, back to the little jellyfish that's what they're called right mm -hmm. look yeah, at the you can, yeah <laughs> you can even see some of the uh some of the details of the little um what are they called their little tendrils yeah Pentacles. That's a very nice splotch. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm just laying those thick brush strokes down. I I love this. I can't wait to see this finished. Not much more time. Oh wow. Oh, this is so cool. And this is Shiza. Oh, just kidding. Green. <laughs> that was just a sneak peek. Ooh, That's I love the little bubbles like in the back of the like, like the background. Mm-hmm. Ooh, just okay. A little so sparkle. Definitely obliterated the white. Yep. And this looks super cool. I love the bold brush strokes and the uh, the bold colors as well. Yeah, I brush strokes are seriously one of the the most important factors within a painting. I have a hard time being blendy, blendy, smoothie, smoothie. So mm -hmm. I appreciate 
when people just leave their their brush strokes in because it's, it shows the emotion with which in your like what you're feeling within that moment, right? A brush stroke can tell you so much about an artist and their paintings and their emotions. Mm -hmm. And we are back to Nikki with the octopus. How many tickles does it take to make an octopus laugh? <laughs> what is ten? Ten, <laughs> ten tickles. <laughs> oh, she is doing such a good job. That's so great. This is super impressive. I have painted um, a couple of different octopus before and with all their little suction cup things and there's so many details within an octopus that you don't really think is there until you paint one. So mm -hmm. I am thoroughly impressed with this. and. We have about a minute and 30 seconds left and I'm just blown oh away. Wow. Okay, we're back to Aaron. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. nice. Look at the dimension and the depth within this painting. Mm -hmm. That like, I mean, it seems like such a more basic painting compared to some of the other ones. But if you're an artist, you kind of know like, this is super hard to just to achieve within a certain amount of time. And yeah. each one of these little spheres have so much definition and the depth within this painting is just awesome. It's amazing. The shadow and the highlight and all the in-between. Ah, Juju, I love everything he is doing right now. Ooh, Ooh. There we go. 40, 40 seconds. Oof. Remember, you guys, to hop onto artbattle.com or Art Battle the app and get your votes in, get your bids in. Oh my goodness, I I I love this piece. I like the little stripes. It like reminds me of Waldo. Like, where's Waldo? Are those little um like smoke tendrils coming up? I think so. It's hard to see with the lights beaming. And from so far away. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he's gonna add um, another message where that arrow is. Oh no, we lost our timer. I don't know how much time's left, but it can't yeah. be long. And oh, nice. You, oh my gosh. Look at that. You were yeah. so right. The galaxy. That is so cool. Oh, cool. we're on the speed round now. <laughs> He's a, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look away. Don't blink. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. That's got to be it. That's the end of yeah. the round. That's the end of round two, everybody. Dude, these paintings are so awesome just phenomenal oh, i love i love art battle the whole process is so it's so great to watch it's so awesome to see like how like different artists like what they come up with to paint within those 20 minutes right mm -hmm. so be so different like like i said round one we had a lot of landscapes and then this round we had two um sea creatures and but like overall you don't usually get that within the same round mm -hmm. um and these ones are all mostly super different. So I love this piece. I seriously do. Yeah. Idea. So cool. Oh, look, it's a light bulb. That's cute. Yeah. It looks like there's other things written in there. Oh, God. She she seriously oh, did the tape. Job. Oh. oh, she got the tape off. Wow such nice clean crisp borders which uh, I always like taping on canvas is very difficult um especially if you paint wet but it's mm -hmm. just the tape in general usually doesn't stick so I'm super happy that she achieved those clean edges mm -hmm. I believe yeah this is Corrine this is super cool I love how the like the little the little guys on the ends like the I, I don't know if those are called tentacles or not but 
Yeah, this, that's why I called them tendrils. I wasn't sure. Oh, yeah. This is super cool, too. I wasn't sure because she, she spent a lot of time on the, the face in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, the, like, head piece as well. Yeah, so... Um, she still got it all in. And she got some really great textures on there, too. Yeah, and smaller details that I wouldn't... Like, they're not obvious at first, but if you keep looking at it... Mm-hmm. Um, and Nikki, this is this is great. This is seriously great. I love like the webbing in between the tentacles. I, know. I don't know why that's like my favorite part. <laughs> Have you ever painted an octopus before? I once, and it was terrible. So I, this is it, very it's impressive. A lot of like they seem like little, like easy little creatures, but they yeah. have so much, like small details that you have to get in. Absolutely. Oh, panning out to the crowd. Make sure you guys that you get your guys' votes in. Make sure that if you love any of these pieces, go bid. Um, I did receive um, from Simon earlier that uh, Mackenzie's bid was a mistake. Um, so it's not as high as what we had been saying it was. Oh, so a thousand. Scared about the price? Don't be. Go back on there. Um, they should have definitely changed the biddings for it. So if you want Bigfoot, go bid for it. <laughs> Gosh, it's so cool. Wow, what a what a process. I have sigh of relief. And you guys, if you are watching this and you're on the edge about voting or not, uh, but you are in love with either anybody from round one or round two, make sure you go vote so you can see them in round three. Round three is a bigger canvas and that is only four people competing in the last round. It gets pretty intense and it's pretty awesome. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow, with the bubbles. That oh, is that's gorgeous. Genius. I am obsessed with this piece. And I do believe that this piece is also for auction. So make sure if this piece is something that you are in love with, like I am. And she's got little dragonflies in there. Mm -hmm. So cute. Yes, you can definitely go and bid on this piece as well. And this is a bigger painting. I cannot remember what the sizes are. Do you remember what the sizes are for? I, I don't. I want to say it's like, I don't know. It's bigger than the 18 by 24. Um, it could be like a 20 by 30. Possibly. Maybe. Um, but it is flat rate shipping, which is an amazing deal um, because shipping paintings is expensive. So um, definitely go get yourself this painting if you are in love with it and it is not very expensive right now so you could get this for a steal what's going on with my app yeah, I love going to look at the paintings through the app. And it looks like you can still vote on round one and round two. So if you are late to the game at all, don't feel like you can't go in and still vote for who you want to move on to the final round. And in the final round two, the, the canvas gets bigger, right? It's a, yeah. it's a larger canvas. It is a larger canvas, more real estate to cover up if you're like me and you feel <laughs> the need to pale the white. <laughs> <laughs> It is definitely more of a challenge and not only because like even if you don't want to like obliterate the white right it's it's a bigger canvas so it's a different um it adds a harder component as far as your composition goes because um your composition should really be in one of four places within that canvas um and it changes with the size because right. canvas so let's see i've got to vote it's so hard to pick somebody, just one person. I know. It's always the, uh, it's always the thing, isn't it? No, it is, it, that, it is super difficult when there are so many amazing artists. And so this is Bernadette, correct? Mm -hmm. And so her. 
Have you competed with her before? Or I you just- have, yes. Yeah, we actually, um, we also used to work together and then oh, cool. we competed together. I think that she was even there the first time that I competed. Um, I think she had competed before that as well. Yeah, she's been with Art Battle for for a long time. Maybe I've met her. I've just been so stressed and a recluse. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go back and look to see. I don't know. I would. I think I would remember if she made something this amazing. I know it's actually what's really cool on the app too is that you can click on the artist's name and um, sometimes there's work posted there just from their studio work, but other times um, past art battle work is also Uh, posted there. Mm -hmm. Yep, that is true. I'm so anxious to find out who is moving on to the third round. Oh. Ooh, that abstract from um, Anastasio. I didn't look at it up close, but on the picture, you're right. It is, it? it's pretty amazing. Yeah. And it didn't look like in the video feed there was really much on top, but there really is. Mm-hmm. Like he, he they really covered the canvas. It's yeah. It's hard to do. I mean, everybody thinks that abstracts are just so easy, but they're actually like the hardest art form to do and do them well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And this is just so well done with all of the color shifts within the brushstrokes. It's just... It's very well balanced, I think. Phenomenal. It definitely keeps your eye moving. It also looks like this is um, Anastasio's first art battle. Nice. Yeah. That had to have been nerve wracking. <laughs> One was I'm, like over the top. <laughs> I'm pretty impressed with the the amount of, um, I don't know, the, the success of the painting wouldn't clue you into the fact that it's their first art battle. Exactly. And that's that's just it. like. Sometimes I feel like nerves can work in your favor. Like my first art battle I ever did, I was so nervous, but it made me paint a lot faster than what I had originally practiced. Um, (laughs) And I actually got done, I think before the timer, at least in my first round before the timer went off. So I was, I mean, I was pitter pattering and like fidgeting with it, but like everything was basically in there and done. Um, By the time I have finished. Let's see here. Okay, so it looks like we have the winners for round one and round two. So who is moving on to round three? Um, From the first round is Kat Templeton and Liesl. Um, So Kat had the koi fish with the portrait and the kind of flowers. And then Liesl did that amazing abstract or not abstract, but uh, landscape with the mountain. Mountain, right. Of- mm-hmm. And then from round two, we have Corrine. And Corrine did the jellyfish. And Love we also Susan. have BQ and I am super pumped to see all four of these artists move into round three. I think they all executed their first paintings beautifully. And I'm always interested to see if for who moves on, if they do sort of the same, um, like if you did a landscape, are you going to do a landscape again? Or are you going to completely change it up? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Do you ever, uh, do you change it up or do you still do like somewhat the same? You know, the way the way that I change it up, because I would say landscapes in general are where I'm most comfortable and portraiture is something that I still really need to work on. Um, so when I switch it up, I, I try and make it sort of like one landscape will be um, maybe during the day or maybe like sunset time. And then the other landscape will be like nighttime, maybe some stars in the sky, or maybe it'll be darker in terms of 
Um, like it'll be mushrooms instead of like a forest or, you know, I'm either changing the color scheme to be, you know, brighter or darker, or I'm changing the, um, you know, the actual subject matter to be kind of large scale or smaller scale. Right. Say those are the changes that I That's do. I, I think I've always done some form of portraits within mine. I don't think I've ever not painted a portrait portrait mm -hmm. at all. You know, I think that's I think that's a good um, strategy because I feel like portraits are really um, they're very popular. They're very easy to relate to and find I, meaning in, perhaps. Right. Like there, I think it, I think it's a number of factors. I think like what you were saying, like people can relate to them. They might see themselves within that in a certain way. But I also <sighs> think that people perceive portraits as harder than an abstract or harder than um like a landscape and that's not necessarily true mm -hmm. um i think that anything you do within 20 minutes is very difficult and i think that um an abstract to do in 20 minutes is extremely difficult uh anything really even what erin did with her little spiraling beads I'm, that's what i'm going to call them mm -hmm. um the, like it looks simple right and right. it looks like it would be easy to do oh you're just drawing a bunch of you know little beads but if you actually look at it it's what she achieved within 20 minutes is just mind-blowing to me because she put so much definition and depth and shape and um values within these little beads these spiraling beads and it's always impressive so but i do think that people often find portraits um maybe more impressive because we've all sort of tried to draw right even if you're not an artist and i think the wow factor of wow they did that in 20 like a face in 20 minutes is always impressive yeah but even like mackenzie's bigfoot mm-hmm <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole figure and a background and foreground and I I mean every single artist that we've seen tonight I feel like it was it no matter what it was going to be a difficult competition to get into the finals because I think everybody performed really really well mm -hmm. um, I I do love this and Juju I can't believe he didn't make it I know I and know he, so when I did the live um, commentary for Art Battle Chicago last year, it was um, this style, this Basquiat style is very popular in that area. Uh, I don't know if we've seen a lot of that within the Pacific Northwest, at least I haven't. Um, and certainly not at any art battle that I've been to personally. I don't know if you've seen anything like that. Um, but this is, I don't know, his, his piece was just so impressive and I am, I'm definitely in love with it. Yeah, I can't say that I've seen anything quite like that before. Um, but you had said something earlier about his work. I'm going to see if I can find it here. Um, let's see here. He's considered considered a bridge between street art and expressionism. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that I think it's that um, that blend between the two styles that's so striking. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody performed really, really well. I think everybody should be really proud of themselves. I know that. The times that I've competed and I didn't make it to the third round, like I said, I'm always really hard on myself, but I think everybody should be super proud of themselves. They've, from my perspective as a professional artist, I, they all blew my mind tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be really hard when you're competing and to not move on, but it's always to, it's always nice to just remember that you still participated and you still did something amazing by painting a, and, this amazing masterpiece in 20 minutes. Right. Like each and every one of these artists should be just so proud of what they've done because to do any of these artworks within 20 minutes is just, ha, ah, it's an accomplishment. Yeah, it really is. 
I am excited for round three because I really want to see, like I was saying, if the people who advance will do sort of the same but different or if they're going to completely change it up. I think that's one of my most favorite parts about art battle is like seeing who advances and what their next painting is going to be. Mm -hmm. When you do art battle, do you plan for two paintings? Yes, always. Well, <clears throat> I was going to, I almost said always, I kind of said always, but like I said, the last time <laughs> I did it, I had a plan, but I didn't practice or anything. So normally, normally I plan and practice for two paintings. And it's so hard to choosing which painting you're going to do for your first. Right. Because that painting has to be good enough to get you on to the last round. But your last round painting has to be good enough to win. So I know. Like... <laughs> that, I seriously, I am so glad you said that because it's such a challenge figuring out, okay, like, do I do this one and just depress everybody off the bat? And then hopefully it carries on to my next painting that maybe isn't as good, but they'll still consider my my first painting. But mm -hmm. it is, it's definitely a challenge. Yeah. And I know for me, like um, with Susie Q and with Kat, because they both did um, portraits of some sort I wonder if they're going to do portraits again and if they do how they're going to change it up um mm -hmm. just because with me like i said i've always only done portraits of some sort in art battle and it is it gets difficult to like i don't you don't want to be like oh, okay we just see, we just saw that right right like you want the audience to be like okay she's doing the same thing um like, let's see something else. But you also have to remember, like, what these artists do for their standard studio work, too. So, but it can be a challenge to try to, like, make sure you please, like, you're sticking within your style and your voice and still pleasing your audience and trying to impress them with your style and your voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it can be so hard to balance, I feel, to, to balance what what you're good at, first of all, into what you can do in 20 minutes, balancing that with like your skill of being able to do it quickly. Um, but also the concept of it needs to be really solid because, I don't know, I feel like if there's not a solid concept behind the painting, it can kind of, can kind of unravel pretty quickly from there, especially if things start going wrong. Mm -hmm. it's hard to come back from that. I agree. <clears throat> Have you seen art battles before where, you know, something goes horribly wrong for the artist and it just turns into something completely different? Um, I don't know that I have. I'm sure I have. I've been to so many. But I also don't know what the artists have planned ahead of time. So you could be completely in the dark if they mess up or if it was like an on-purpose thing. Mm, that's a good point. For me personally, I've messed up in a lot of my art battle. Um, probably almost every single one. <laughs> right. <laughs> but people don't know because yeah. they don't know what you're trying to achieve, right? But in that moment as an artist, you have to do critical thinking and do it fast and try to figure out how you're going to fix this without completely botching it. Mm -hmm. I read somewhere, you know, I'm sure somebody famous said it, but um, <clears throat> basically that painting is like 2% talent and 98% problem solving. And I feel like Art Battle is the perfect example of that. Oh, that couldn't be more accurate <laughs> at all. <laughs> I completely agree. Uh, in Art Battle and my studio work, I have very few paintings where I'm like, I am getting to the point where like things just are coming more, I don't know, I'm not having as many problems, but I still have problems. Mm -hmm. um, but when I first started my career as an artist, you know, I had, there was a lot of problem solving and it still is, especially when I do abstracts um, and half my portfolio work and my studio work is abstracts. Um, like strictly pure 100% abstract work and those ones are either they're hit or miss 
and most, I would say about 80% of the time, abstracts are where my problem solving skills come into play because for me personally, they're very free. I look at an abstract like it should be freeing, it should be intuitive, it should be something that just comes to you spontaneously. But to also do that and to make it look beautiful and be a well-balanced painting and have good colors and good composition and have all of the, the, you know, um, the staples of what makes a good painting a great painting in there and to do that well is, is it can be very challenging. So I think you're right. 98% is definitely a hundred percent solve problem solving. Mm -hmm. It's interesting too, when you talk about problem solving in abstract work, because I feel like if it's a portrait or if it's something that's, you know, supposed to look like something, the, the visual problem solving can be not easier, but just a little bit more outlined or... Um, you know where the problem is and you know what to yeah. do. Uh-huh. Maybe not necessarily knowing exactly how to fix it, but you kind of know what needs to happen. Right. Um, where with abstract work, there's... it's it's almost like it's still infinitely possible of what could happen next or how to solve those problems. Exactly. And Kandinsky, he is the one that said, you know, abstract work is the highest form of artwork because you ha that that's exactly why it's because you have to have the knowledge to be, you know, a somebody who can do every other form of art but you have to mix it in there so you have to have you know like i was saying like your line your value your your depth your your ratio your composition every everything has to hit within an abstract painting um that follow the rules within what makes a painting great and it, when you're being so free and intuitive it really can be challenging at times and i don't that's why i said like i don't think people realize how difficult abstract paintings can be mm -hmm. um a lot of people especially like my husband he's just like nah, it's an abstract like pish posh i can do that and you know like our our one of our four kids can do it by by throwing some paint on the canvas but it's so not true like <laughs> he's very old school though he very much likes uh narrative art and the old school art like rembrandt and mm -hmm. Da Vinci and Michelangelo, he likes storytelling. So yeah. for artwork, he's just like, he, he's always trying to persuade me into being like, you should do this. It would be so cool if you would do this. And I'm just like, mm, or not. <laughs> but it's, like, it's been, like, it goes back to art battle too. Everything always goes back to art battle because there are people who like narrative art and different forms of art, like mixed media, abstracts, um, imagery. There's so many different styles of art that appeal to everybody as an individual, right? And you have your mm -hmm. favorite form of art that you enjoy looking at. And um, it can be challenging to, to please the masses. Yeah. But I don't have any interest in doing narrative art. Yeah. And I was about to say, I feel like most artists... <clears throat> don't necessarily have a lot of interest in like trying to please the masses. I mean, obviously there is some level of that, especially if you're doing art battle or something where people are bidding or voting on you, you have to kind of appeal, but I feel like most of the time everybody just wants to express themselves and put themselves on the canvas and just like let I it be. Feel like that too. I feel like that is accurate for about 90% of all art battles that I've seen. Um, mm -hmm. Most artists just express themselves. But I have seen artists who have a completely different body of studio work than what they show up at art battle with. And I don't know if it's a strategy, but um, I find I always find that interesting. I don't yeah. know. But maybe Definitely. they are these the masses or, you know, shock and awe or right because then you have some people that are doing something that is all about the performance aspect of the art and the, and the you know the whole painting of it um, exactly. i don't know if you were there when i don't remember the artist's name but she painted a banana with a banana Are you there for that 
No, I wasn't. Oh my gosh. Yeah, she was literally putting paint to a peeled banana and painting, and she painted a banana, you know, like the banana tape to the wall. She painted that scene. Oh my and it, <laughs> it was, was quite there, a spectacle. <laughs> I, was, I was there at an art battle in Seattle where, um, and she's very, gosh, I can't remember. It's like little monsters or something with monsters in her Instagram handle, but she like pulled her pants down and like sat in paint and then sat on the canvas and then made a monster out of her painted butt form. Oh my gosh, that's great. <laughs> And I was just like the showmanship, but then she didn't realize because um, I don't know if all art battles are the same, right? Like different cities have different rules and like materials and what you can do or what you can't do. But mm -hmm. at least Art Battle Seattle, when I was there, y you even if you finished before the timer ended, you couldn't leave. And oh. she did it within like, I want to say like five to 10 minutes max. And then she tried to leave and I was not competing that day. I was helping out, I was volunteering. And I was like, no, 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 you can't leave or I will be disqualified. Like, don't leave. And she just oh sat gosh, down and I think she, I don't know. She might not have been embarrassed, but she might've just wanted to get the heck out of there because everybody just saw her booty. But I thought it was great. Like That's just amazing. the show. And it, she very much stuck to her studio work. Like what she created looked, it was cohesive with her studio work and everything that you see on Instagram from her. So. I was proud of her. <laughs> I so wouldn't have the guts. <laughs> oh, I know, right? Me neither. <laughs> uh, but this painting that Bernadette is working on right now is just... I'm it, blown. Yeah, I think it was a great move to make that opening painter paint all the way through because the amount of work that she's been able to put on this, especially with the dry time in between, um, it's phenomenal. I, I know. I like really want to be an opening painter now again. Right. I used to do mm -hmm. so many of them and it was like a mini art battle. Like you got like 25 more minutes or something like that. It was nothing, maybe 15 minutes. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But to oh, this is just, this is so gorgeous. And even then it's still a full painting that is done to excellence in still such a short amount of time because she's not painting during the light like during the rounds right. and um so she's doing it in little bits little chunks here and there and oh gosh look at the color she's adding into the hair mm -hmm. this is this is seriously a, a gorgeous painting and if you guys are still watching um this painting is so great it only has five bids it's at 95 dollars right now and seriously if you want an original piece of art from a local artist or from just an artist that's supported by art battle or is supporting art battle this is this is your time to buy something for this price because i guarantee you you're not going to find any of her studio work that's going to go for that amount of money mm -hmm. and it's flat rate shipping so there is no better deal there's really not for for original art there's really not a better deal. And it looks like, so I'm on the Art Battle app right now, um, looking at the process pictures of it, and where that, you can't really see it right now because she's standing in front of the painting while she's painting it, and um, the camera is a, a little high up, so it's just focused on the face. But um, I was seeing there was like a super big highlight on her shoulder that's pre presented as the forefront where she's kind of like leaning her one shoulder forward. It looked like there was a super bright highlight, but at least in these photos, uh, these process photos on the Art Battle app, it might look like sort of like a gold leaf or something sparkly there um, that's making it really pop. And just the different amount of like levels and the elements and the layers to this painting is just amazing. Yeah, it's interesting that the, or maybe my app isn't, um, let me see, um, for yours, does it show like the level that she's at right now or is it still no. kind of an earlier? Okay, it's, it's not updated for you either. <clears throat> I'm always inspired by what people are, are painting at these, at these art battles. It just... I know I've said it before, but just what they come with and what they deliver is just amazing to me.
I know personally, for me, I've felt a lot of pressure to try and get into more portraiture work because of the, um, you know, the popularity that they seem to receive um, while at Art Battles. But do you feel like you've ever felt a pressure to try and work on new technique or, or a new style or anything like that because of Art Battles? No, I so I've definitely like I said, I, I my studio work is about fifty percent pure abstracts and then the other fifty percent is abstract realism. And within that abstract realism I've got like abstract elements, but I've also got some type of imagery. So a portrait, an animal, um those are like the main two that I do and it's mostly women. Um Art battle, I've, I've definitely gone out of my comfort zone as far as colors. Normally, I like more muted colors. I um, mm. don't like flashy, bright colors, but uh, Art Battle kind of pushed me. I was like, no, I'm going to try these. I saw somebody do it at, oh gosh, I can't remember when, but I was like, I want to do these bright colors for an Art Battle competition. And I did it. And it's a great way to like, Kind of judge to see if something is going to go correctly or if people are going to respond well to it for your studio work so mm -hmm. i go into it if i challenge myself i go into it trying to be like are people going to receive this well and when it does go well which i haven't really had a terrible i've never had a terrible art battle experience i really haven't um regardless if i've made it into the third round or one or not um Every art battle has been a great experience for me. But um, the stuff that is received super well, I then incorporate it into my studio work, which I, is sort of an inspiration. And I sort of draw from, from that feedback from the crowd, which is nice. I do feel pressure when I was competing um, to not have... I don't, I don't know, like to, to be perceived as, oh, the girl that does portraits, like Rob and like he's the dragon guy, right? And so when he doesn't mm -hmm. the dragon, people are almost let down. Um, he, at the last regionals, I know that he did not do a dragon in the first round. He did, uh, I think it was like a lady um, with like deer. It was still mystical, it was still magical, but um, I think he was regretting not doing a dragon the first round. um so i i feel like every artist has if if they have a certain niche and they have you know their voice and what they normally paint i think there's always pressure to produce something new and to produce just not the same um if that makes sense yeah totally i i don't know about you but for me it's like like i said like I don't want to be known as the girl who does portraits or I cover the eyes for all my portraits. Um, cause most, <laughs> yeah. of the time, most of the time it's, um, the eyes are somewhat either I've done eyes before, but a lot of my, I would say about half of my art battle paintings have were where the eyes were like obscured. Um, and so I, it was Rob actually who asked me, um, right before, regionals last year and he was like well why like why is that like why do you do that and then I had to explain like my reasoning behind it because everybody's reasoning is different for what they do mm. um but yeah there's I think there's always a pressure to push yourself push the envelope and you know always try to to outperform yourself from the last one and that can get hard especially if you do these often right what about you? Um, what was the question? <laughs> do you Let's feel oh, to, pressure? <clears throat> yeah, so or to create something new. I I do feel the pressure to create new things. I felt a big pressure to try portraiture, but um, upon further investigation, or just upon trying and realizing <laughs> that it was going to take a lot more work to get good enough with portraiture to be able to do it well in 20 minutes yeah um so i and while i'm still working on portraiture um i feel like i also lean further into my sort of abstract kind of intuitive nature style that um you know it just i don't know i i do want to add a sense of 
a mystery to my landscapes, but I also don't want it to be where you always know, oh, she's going to paint a forest because that's how I feel. I love painting forests. But if I'm known as the forest and mushroom girl, I'm okay with that because right. I will probably almost always paint a mushroom or a forest in an old yeah. house. <laughs> you know, I thought about doing like animals or a landscape because I'm not, I, I'm good at both. Like I feel like you can be good at anything, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I do paint animals and um, I've done landscapes and for me, landscapes are super easy. So I'm always like, meh, but there is a pressure to like, oh, maybe I should change it up and do like an animal bowl, but then I don't want, I don't know. Like it's just, it's hard to judge like, I don't know what you, what you should and shouldn't do mm -hmm. and what you're like. So there is that sort of like an element to it. Ultimately, I feel like if anybody is watching this that has ever done an art battle or wants to, or feels that type of pressure with art battle, especially, I feel like it's best to just go into it doing what you love exactly. doing and what you're super passionate about, because that's going to be where you're most comfortable um, problem solving in the moment. It's going to be where you can kind of fall back on what you know, sort of intrinsically and deep inside when you are completely hopped up on the most adrenaline that you've ever felt in your life. Like, <laughs> I, I know, right? It's, yeah ultimately i do i i think that's why i end up painting women um for all of my art battles is because i i love painting women um i think there's such beauty in women and power um so that's usually what i end up doing but i have thought about changing it up but for those reasons that you just stated i usually stick to stick to what i love mm -hmm. it's super interesting that you say that um bright vivid colors aren't usually your go-to because I feel like whenever I think of your art battle pieces I always go back to that bright pink one that you did I'm pretty sure you had like really bold um like dark shapes in there as well and I don't know I just I can picture that like neon pink or orange yeah, I know colors I that's how I got into my fluorescents and I have used them I use them on almost, in almost every painting now so mm -hmm. it, it's like I said art battle can shape your your studio work as well so um yeah it's it's a great place to try out to like experiment and if you don't take yourself so seriously like I do <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious Brittany but no um it definitely, art battle, I, and I tell this to everybody too, I've had a lot of people like question me about like art battle and like how it has shaped my studio work and it definitely plays a big influence on it. Um, but yeah, like like you said, like that that bright sherbet, pink and orange is mm -hmm. definitely, I feel like people think that that's, like when they see that they're like, oh, okay, I, I know who she is um, because yeah. I, I have done that for most of my art battles since I did it my first time. So yeah, I don't know, maybe well, people like bright colors like I do. Yeah, I definitely but do. <laughs> but your, your stuff is very colorful though. So mm -hmm. I don't know. And I don't, I like most of my stuff is very like uh, organic and neutral colors. Like I do have color in there, right? But it's all very, um, like I said, organic and raw and like I just love that but it is nice to get like those splashes of bright colors in there mm -hmm. and I don't know if they just announced the winners or if they are yeah it kind of looked like they were announcing who was actually moving on oh we had insider information mm -hmm. <laughs> the beans. hopefully that was okay <laughs> <laughs> Man, some of these paintings are just fantastic. I I am really blown away by by Liesl's landscape in the first round. Mm -hmm. I know Susanna does a lot of landscapes too, and she's just awesome at them. So yeah, Mom Ross. I know. When I think of doing landscapes for art battle, I think of I think of Suzanne, and I'm like, mm, I probably couldn't pull it off as well as her. So maybe I should just stick to women. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I can't like trees are my jam, and like sunset sky through the trees, all about it. Um, but like that mountain texture with the palette knife, I just 
don't know. Yeah, I don't get I think, it. Uh, let me see. I'm going to go back to our little bios here. Um, where is she, Lisa? I think... So she does a lot of uh, different art forms. Um, she does sculpture, photography. Um, but I think the sculpture has probably influenced her paintings a lot because there is such texture and so much on the canvas to look at. And you could, like feel like you can look at it and like reach out and touch the actual clouds. Mm -hmm. um, probably like stems from her, her sculptural work. And photography, I would assume, would inspire her imagery because she's doing landscapes, right? Um, mm -hmm. So if she's a big photographer and she's out in nature, and we all know the Pacific Northwest is a huge place for nature, and it's just gorgeous over here, um, I can definitely see how that has influenced her work. Yeah. And I just, I'm such a sucker for uh, like painty textures on the canvas. Like once they're dry, it's my favorite thing to just like run my hands across the surface of the painting. I know that's like, I don't know. I feel like maybe that's a little <laughs> looked down upon and obviously like in an art gallery, you could never do that. But <laughs> like personally, when I'm looking at a painting and I have permission to touch it, I love feeling that texture of paint on the canvas. I think if you just have like a really good varnish on there that it's it's okay i'm always like you can touch it don't it's okay <laughs> like yeah. but i think that's where like, elitism comes into is like they've like put all these rules and regulations on artwork and fine artwork and it's like you have to wear white gloves and it's like no you don't like mm -hmm. i literally, like toss my canvas around when i'm making my paintings <laughs> it's okay <laughs> So we have, so we just talked about Liesl and Kat is going in as well. And she, um, she is a raw art expressionist. She is from the Pacific Northwest. Um, she likes vivid color. So we can definitely see that from her first round. Um, but I love her message. You go on to Art Battle and you go to the event that you were on. You can all look at the their bios and um, access their social medias through that way as well. So you guys can follow them, but um, you can read all about them and their artistic journeys and their inspiration. And Did you say that Corinne was also moving on as well? She is, yes. I love um her work like all through her instagram it's just it's yeah. studio work is just just there's so much movement and it's just so gorgeous like i her composition everything mm -hmm. here it says that she explores the inner landscape themes ranging from grief and depression to the highs of joy and giggles in between i just love that i think the inner landscape is um, something that inspires me as well. So I kind of, I love seeing how other people interpret that. Now, do you, um, well, let's just talk about um, who else made it through? Susie Q. Susie Q made it through as well. Um, we'll talk about her really quick and then I'll keep my question. So Susie Q's artwork is super gorgeous. Um, I don't know, you guys should all go follow all of these artists and support them. But she likes to paint with bright colors and topics that evoke thought and emotion. Um, I think that's all artists, but to be so passionate about it, you know, and to really like try to get that message across is, is awesome. But her work is gorgeous as well. Um, she's got some very nice work on her Instagram. Um, mm -hmm. I was going to ask you a question, but I can't remember now. Dang it, I should have asked you. <laughs> I have I have four kids, so I have mom brain all the yeah. time. <laughs> all the time. Totally get it. <laughs> this is so great. I love um, I love looking through the artist's Instagram and seeing seeing their studio work or you know sometimes you're just seeing bits of their sketchbook or even just bits of their life 
and then seeing how that translates into their art as well. And then further seeing how that translates into art battle. I think that, that um, those different outlets is, is really interesting. Yeah, I agree. I don't know why I just love um, the different pieces that build an artist's kind of like the experience of an artist and, and all of their work and from the scribbles in their sketchbook to the grand studio paintings to the 20 minute paintings that they can throw together like it's just it's so great i know and like we've done it before like we're no newbies to art battle but still it's like I, every time I watch an art battle or every time I compete, I'm always blown away by the other artists and like, even by myself, like what I can do within the time of frame that I'm given. Um, I don't know. It's very like, I don't know what the right word would be, but it definitely makes me like recognize my worth and my art's worth. And especially when people relate to it. Um, that's like probably the highest form of like gratitude that I could ever give anybody is like when people connect with my art and they just get it and they get like who I am and what my art's about. It's, it mm. just so much to me. I would say that's also a very special moment in participating in an art battle is when somebody bids on your painting and then they get to take it home at the end of the, the battle and you, you get to talk with them and talk with them about why they wanted that piece and that is just right literally I, <laughs> I i know i totally get the feeling too because like it could mean something to you but it could well it will mean something completely different to anybody else and so to get like other people's like feedback on it i always try to not say like what my intentions were Mm -hmm. because I don't want to persuade like the way other people view my work and like with their meanings of it right but it, it is such a special a special time to be able to like have a collector be able to talk to you and tell you why they love that painting and what what made them want to buy it and what made them want to take it and put it on their walls so mm -hmm. it's super great I had one art battle where the person that bid on it was, you know, it was being shipped to them. And it was the first time that I had somebody bid on it that it was going to get shipped to them. So it was such an interesting, I waited until the very end to see who was going to take it home and nobody ever came up for it. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I, for the first time, I don't get to talk to the person that purchased my artwork. And I just like sent it out in the universe. Like, thank you, whoever you are. I want you to know that I am so grateful for like, yeah you connecting to my piece <laughs> i think that's an also like set like what art battle does for the artist community in getting their work into every corner of the world right it's like mm -hmm. i feel like sometimes there's just you're stuck in your location which is not always true but with an organization like art battle it you have the potential to reach everywhere within the world and everybody gets to see your paintings and you know, whether they like it or they don't, like there's always feedback from from other cultures and other people. And um, it's such a great way to grow as an artist. Like since I've joined Art Battle, I have grown so much, not only as like a person and within my art, but like my outreach, right? And I have people who have met me at Art Battle or seen me on lives and they followed me on Instagram and they're like devote followers and like, I try to have conversations with people like if they DM me or something, um, I I love engaging in conversation with people, even if, even if they don't buy anything, right? Like mm -hmm. it's there to support you or they love what you do. And um, it's always nice to be able to like talk to people who you might not have had the chance to meet without art battle. So right. I think it's super cool. And if you're an artist out there and you have never done art battle, but you think that this would be a super fun and cool thing to do, uh, don't be afraid of the 20 minute time limit because I promise you, you can paint something amazing within 20 minutes, even if you don't think you can. It is amazing how, even though the adrenaline is rushing and there, you know, it doesn't feel like a lot of time. And when you're painting, there is definitely like a, ah, we're already halfway through. 
Um, I do also feel though that that time stretches out in front of you and it kind of elongates a little so that you're right. Like you're, so, you will almost surprise yourself in what you are able to create within that time period. Right. Right. I don't know if you've ever been in a car accident, but I've been in a couple, not by my own doing, of course, but the time seems to like slow down. Like, like when you're in like fight or flight or you just have this massive adrenaline rush, stuff does slow down for you, like in your own mind. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's such a cool experience. I don't know. And to be able to like get to do that without being like in danger of like, right car or something bad happening like it's a cool way to like experience that sensation within your painting and then to be able to see like what you did during that time is just mind-blowing so gosh you're so right it is such a huge adrenaline rush and it doesn't really simmer down until way after the fact and it's <laughs> yeah no it's i know i really the one that i won that got me into regionals i like I said, I have four kids. I am always tired, <laughs> but <laughs> I could not go to sleep. I, even after my first one, I made it into the third round, but like I didn't ultimately win. But I could. I you just can't sleep after. Like it, you're just so <laughs> pumped up, and it's I don't know. It's such a cool experience. Mm -hmm. And I feel like after you've done, like you said, after you did your first one, you're hooked. And I, I was the same way. Once I did my first one, I was just like, oh my gosh, when is the next one? Especially because I didn't win. You know, obviously it was my first one. Right. But yeah, it's it's addicting. It's a little addicting because it's so, it's so much fun. And I don't know if you're like me, but you probably are. It's like, even if you don't win, like, and you might be disappointed in yourself, you're still so happy and so proud of the artist that did win. And mm. it's it's such a great community to be in it in art battle there's like no everybody's supportive everybody is super nice and they want the best for you even if that means that they can't advance right like right so oh it looks like we might be getting close to starting the third round here And make sure if you guys are still watching that you bid on these paintings and support these artists and support Art Battle. Because like I was just saying, it's such an amazing thing to be a part of and Art Battle just supports artists from all over the world and they seriously do so much. I mean, I'm talking from my own personal experience as well that art battle for my career and my art and myself it's been such a huge boost for myself and um i've been able to grow i've been i've gotten so much more confident within myself and my art and what i can produce for mm -hmm. for my audience yeah i totally agree i feel the same way i feel like there's also something really um sort of self-affirming about being in the art battle is seeing how you really can be your your full creative self and create this thing in 20 minutes and have people vote on it have people bid on it and it, i don't know it just suddenly it's like oh my gosh i can really lean into my own style and my my way of doing things and like, that's just what makes art so great is that yeah. it's so particular and personal and I like I was saying, like it it breaks out of that elitism role. Like right now, like and there's no slight against like not to get political, but like there's no like anything against men or anything. But in like the elitism world of art, it they like definitely promote promote male artists above women. Like there, it's like any other industry within our country um mm -hmm. there's a way to get around it there really isn't but like look at this round we have four women in the last round and i don't know it's like such an empowering thing to see as a female artist and see like it's not art battle is all about like the community and you know like they don't choose who wins right the audience chooses it's like what the audience loves and who they want to see and i just think that that is such a great way to promote all the arts. Yeah. 100%. Not to get heavy, but <laughs> <laughs> it's true though, it's, like that is the reality. Since why I was I was called to like I was so drawn to art battles. So um yeah. 
Okay, here we go. Round three, bigger canvas. Four contenders. Who will come out on top? Oh no. <laughs> I have 10% left. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't find And it's charging. Plug that in. And it's charging. Oh gosh. You're not going to make it. I'm going to make it. <laughs> I will make it. All right. So I don't know. They didn't show the names on who is who, but I believe, I believe this is Kat. And it looks like if I'm correct, that she's kind of starting out in the same black sketching out. Mm -hmm. And this might be green. Is that correct? Um, I believe this is her. And I'm wondering if she's going to be doing another landscape of some sort. It kind no, of this, has this, that look. This might be Liesl. Oh, yeah, I think you're right. And it does already have a sort of landscape um, sort of look to it. Kind of like a sunset on water is what I'm getting. Oh, my gosh. What is this? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. The art provoking emotion. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, this is going to be an interesting uh, painting and I cannot wait to see the fine, the finished piece. <laughs> wow, very striking. <laughs> I don't know what the rules are and like... I know, like a live stream. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> and to do this as a female artist. I mean, mm -hmm. it's got wings on it. Are those wings? <laughs> it does look like wings. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh gosh. And that's got to be a giant one because it's a big canvas. It's a big canvas. Kind of looks like it might be a 24 by 36. Yeah. Oh, okay. we got more fish. More fish. So this actually might be... This, I, I think this might be cat. I think mm -hmm. I said... Or the first one that we saw might have been cat, but since she's oh look, it's the spoon. Who was painting with the spoon last time? I don't remember. It was... I don't know oh. if it's a spoon. Is it really a spoon, or is it, it one of the kind of looks like it? But look, I bet if we go back, it was Suzanne that was painting with the spoon-looking device. So that might be Suzanne at that. Susie Q. Susie Q. Yeah. And Susie did that portrait with the galaxy within the hair. Mm -hmm. This might be a, it might be a close up of an octopus. I don't, I don't know. Oh yeah. But it kind of looks like it might be. Mickey in the second round is the one that did the octopus. So it could not be, might not be, I'm not sure. And I do believe this is Liesl and it mm -hmm. looks like it is going to be some sort of a landscape, skyscape. Looks almost like sunsetty. And it looks like it's on water too, because it's got that bit of reflection. She's all happy talking to yeah. the camera. It always amazes me, like how well people can blend with acrylic paints. Oh my gosh, this piece is going to be fantastic. <laughs> It really is. I can't wait. I I can't wait. And the pure joy. Look at the joy <laughs> yeah. on her face. Kind of looks like it's wearing a hard hat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. She's having fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wonder how well the uh, the audience is going to perceive this. Uh -huh. Oh, she, she is just oh totally into it. I love it. And I don't know who that was, but let's see this. I think this is Kat because she did the fish with the portrait last time. And we've got, looks like some more koi fish, maybe in like some kind of a like lily pond. Mm -hmm. What is that tool? I, I think you actually might be right for the, it kind of looks like a hairbrush now that I look at it. It's um, not, but it's like tiny the makeup brushes they're like supposed to i don't know i've never had i've never owned those ones because i'm not like i don't know i'm not i don't feel like i would rather spend my money on art supplies <laughs> oh. <laughs> i know i'm terrible with my brushes like i i buy cheap brushes because of that um because i am 
I'm very mean. I have a good mix of less expensive and more expensive brushes. I'm interested to see what this is going to turn out to be. Yeah, it looks kind of um, kind of like alien-like. Yeah. I can't quite tell what it is yet. All right, so this is for sure Liesl because she did the amazing landscape, and I think I remember her from the first round. It's interesting to me that each of the artists in this final round are painting their canvases in that um, sort of long portrait. Yeah, the mode. vertical. Mm -hmm. I feel like typically I um, I gravitate towards that um, wide landscape. Well, if you do oh. most landscapes, then I'm sure you would. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, already there's just magnificent shading happening here. <laughs> I mean, there's already so much structure. Yeah. I am, I am here for it. Yeah. I, Speaking of spectacle, I, right? <laughs> it's the show, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. We don't have the timer on, so I can't really see. Oh yeah. Start a timer, but this is this is looking pretty awesome. I, I seriously think that is a makeup brush, which would be cool because I have thought about buying those four. Like, it is. It, it is. is. A uh -huh. brush. I knew it. <laughs> I oh, knew it. I love it when I'm right. Those are so cool. But it's supposed to blend makeup really well. So I would assume that it would blend paint really well as well. Okay, this looks like um, like a scary tree. Yeah, or even like a, a kind of like explosion, like a mushroom cloud sort of. But then there's like this arm reaching in. Gosh. It looks like it looks like eyes tree. and then both mouth, like the mouth's open right there down by her paintbrush. Mm -hmm. And it looks like there's like little flowers coming off these branches. So I don't know. I'm interested to see what this is going to be. Oh, here we go. Okay, so who we're looking at right now is Kat. And yeah, this is Liesl. And then Corinne is doing the, you know, the ween. <laughs> and um, Susie Q is doing the fish, the koi. Oh, okay. So I had it wrong. Was. His cat did the, like the fish with the portrait in the first round. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I would have just assumed, um, but it's also interesting because People are doing different things other than Liesl for their final, their final yeah. round. Green is, or no, Susie Q is doing a fish that kind of plays into what Kat did the first round. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very interesting. And um, it's interesting that Liesl is kind of taking the same approach that I would have if I was doing both landscapes I would right. make one like a different time of day essentially yeah. that that little guy looks happy not little though that's a 24 by 36 <laughs> canvas at least that is <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> that is standing at attention <laughs> in the middle of this round <laughs> I love the softness that she's been able to achieve in the background here I, I do. I was just going to comment on that. It's just so beautiful already. Um, it's almost like whimsical. It's like soft and like this calming. It's very calm, mm -hmm. which is complete opposite of 20 minute painting. Yeah. And sort of opposite of this sort of, you know what this is reminding me of? Like um, Snow White in that scene Ooh. where the trees get all crazy angry. Yeah, I love the drips though. Uh -huh. Ooh, I'm here for it. Yeah, that's fun. And that technique of getting your brush wet and then like pushing down on the paint to achieve those looks and then the faded top is a that's a technique that I use a lot mm -hmm. within Yeah, I love it. I um am a very big reader. Ooh, look at this. Oh, oh my nice. God. Wow. Wow, indeed. Oh my goodness. This is so beautiful. She's 
done so much already like she could stop if she wanted to i mean she's not going to but i'm just saying she probably could if she wanted to oh gosh we don't have a timer we don't know we just left (laughs) oh Oh, my gosh the amount of depth already oh the nice pop of blue that uh reflective light nice (laughs) I mean, it's happy, so... It really I, is. Just having a great it, time. It doesn't matter what the subject is. If it's, like, a happy, like, if it is is showing, like, a happy emotion, you're going to feel happy regardless of what the subject is. Oh. Uh-huh. Dude, now... Okay, I'm going to have to go buy me some of these brushes, but not for makeup. Yeah, I really love... It just looks so... Um, what's the word? The, the application of paint is so soft and almost goopy, but the coverage... Right. Like I was saying, like, it, it blows my mind, like, how people can, like, blend acrylics because acrylics are not known to be very... a good medium to blend with. Like, uh, when I think of blending, I, I think of oil paint. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mix media, so I start my paintings with, like... Uh, washes and acrylics and water-based materials but then I finish everything with oils and oils is where I blend things um so I'm always blown away by how people can get that gradient going on oh the tree I was wondering how she was going to um get within and like bring the forefront coming out yeah and kind of offset this you know very big sky area yeah and very cool Okay, I really love how she is pushing the colors in this, making oh. it really pop. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I mean, and like also, I mean, it doesn't matter like what I was saying, like what your subject matter is, like the the way you execute what you're painting is ultimately the biggest the biggest factor, right? So it can be. Mm completely crazy and off the wall but if it's executed well and it's painted well it's it's going to receive the glory that it receive that it's going to receive mm-hmm. i feel like she's um, it's a beautiful painting but i feel like she's spending a lot of attention on the background and i kind of want to see a little bit more details within those fish and i'm hoping that we get that yeah i agree I, I actually really like the tree because I think it's a face and it looks like the branch that's coming across the face is like a mustache. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. Mustache. It kind of looks like there's something going on in the bottom half of the piece that we I haven't know. been able to quite see yet. Wow, this is, I mean. That's phenomenal. Yeah, it really is. And we are not even 20 minutes in, so she's still got work to do and she's going to really push the envelope, I think, on getting smaller details in there. Mm-hmm. Oh, look at that. It's like glowing. It's like, mm-hmm. like popping out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's those bright pops of super saturated color that are just making it. I agree. Yeah, it looks like it's glowing, definitely. And it's, it's hard to achieve a glow look as well. So that's, I mean, her techniques, I don't care what she's painting. She's painting. Right. Excellent. Okay, there we go. There we're, we we're go. The fishies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you, <clears throat> when you're competing, do you ever feel like, oh gosh, we need to move on. Like I'm spending too long on this. Move on, yes. move on. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then especially when things are not going my way and I mess something up. Mm-hmm. And then fix it. And I'm like, I should have already been on this point. Okay. Uh-huh. Well, we got a glimpse of the bottom, but not much. Yeah. It almost looked like a helmet or something. No, I can't quite decipher it yet. I'm wondering if she's going to add some like highlights into the water in the back. So it looks like it's like rippling. Mm-hmm. I'm always amazed by like landscape artists. I'm amazed by people that do details with a huge brush. Yeah. Oh my God. Like, what? <laughs> I am obsessed with her background. I really am. There's a nice, fun, like, balance between drips and blendingness, and it's smooth, and it looks like she just basically washed the canvas and mm-hmm. 
there's the colors are just blending nicely together and it's a good thing she didn't do like she did colors that were close to each other so that when they do run into each other it's not going to turn into like mud or turn brown yeah. they'll make another beautiful color okay what's going on down here see it almost looks like a person standing there in the in the bottom what's that the bottom right corner but we just haven't gotten a good look at it yet yeah I see exactly <laughs> what you're talking about Reminds me of like either an astronaut or like, you know, deep sea divers when they have to like wear the helmet. That's kind of what it reminds me of, but. So she did add some highlights into that water um, towards the bottom of the canvas. Mm -hmm. I, just the dance within the water flow matching the, the sky is pretty awesome. I love this. <laughs> the colors are great too. Like I love that that lime green or that could be a yellow next to both the blue and the purple because yellow and purple are complements and then blue and that bright bright yellow is just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love the addition of that purple on there. Yeah, it definitely brings something else to it. I'm just impressed that she's just using makeup brushes. Although I do think that she used um, normal artist brushes in the last round too to get some of the details in. I'm wondering if we'll see any of that or if she's gonna go strictly off the paint or the makeup brushes. Mm -hmm. Show us the bottom. <laughs> This camera person's just like, nope. You oh. don't get. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, just barely. <laughs> They're teasing us. <laughs> oh my gosh. I also want to know how much time is left. Okay, you can see if you go on to the app, you might be able to see on the updated pictures, but. I can't really make it out since they haven't updated it. Oh, they are wings. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Uh, that vein is very skillfully done. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> the colors are really cool too. It's like this almost like negative in part. Uh-huh. Or like thermal imaging yeah. sort of which is pretty cool. I do like the addition of that like fuchsia, but okay, she's working back on the fish now. Yeah, I feel like they just need a little bit more detail work, but everything else is so soft and beautifully. It's got a nice blend of blended work versus really, um, you know, striking brush strokes. I agree. Mm -hmm. I would like to see a little bit more detail, but that's just me personally. I don't know what. Gosh, I feel like this one is so striking and I want like a really good look at it. I, how do I? It's definitely a statement piece. Yeah. I mean, a couple of these are statement pieces, but I do want to get a full look at it. There's a lot of texture in this piece too, especially in the sky, even though it's supposed to be like blended and have like a gradient going on. It's the texture is super nice. Mm -hmm. Yes, it definitely looks very like thermally negative-y. Um, going fast. It's like a tornado. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, look at that bright yellow. Yeah, all of the colors on this one are so great. It, like I said, it's so striking. I feel like, and I paint with black a lot, but I feel like when you paint with black, you have to have like that strong contrast of a bright color with it. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Oh, lovely. Some details there on the water. Ooh, we're going fast. It's speed round <laughs> for sure. I wonder if they're in their last like minute or so. Oh, maybe. Like, we got to be getting close here. 
She just looks so calm like her painting. I know. I really wonder if there are artists that are that are actually calm during this process or if everyone has the same adrenaline just pumping through their veins. I don't know. It's gotta be, right? Like Cameron, who won nationals last year, he has like these super fast jerky movements when he's sketching out. Mm -hmm. He looks very calm. Yeah. Yeah, know. his process was crazy to watch be just because of that. He looks so... I don't know. It was very planned, but also. Oh, it looks not. like. Oh, it looks like we're finished. Yay! <laughs> what an exciting art battle. So you guys want to make sure that if you are watching and you want to vote, get your votes in as quick as possible. Um, bid on those pieces. I know that there's probably a lot of you out there that want Corrine's piece right there. It is definitely. <laughs> I can see it being the centerpiece of a dining room over your fireplace. <laughs> it's a conversation starter, right? In, in your, in your, um, you know, <laughs> never mind. I don't know what's appropriate, <laughs> so I won't say. <laughs> it's fabulous, though. The colors are truly um, very skillfully done. Like, that is not an easy thing to accomplish. This is a, such a cool piece. And I'm going to go to the app to i'm hoping that they have sent in they, i don't think they've put in like the final pictures yet and i'm hoping mm -hmm. they because i would really like to see that full piece with the tree it's mm -hmm. got a lot on the bottom i just can't see the finished piece of it yet this yeah, is haven't quite so, updated. so calm it's like there's movement there's good color in there I love the background on this one and the glow. Mm -hmm. I love how it's like glowing out, especially on the bottom where that yellow hits the purple mm -hmm. because the contrast colors, it really makes it stand out. Like the yellow and the blue, it still stands out. But when you move it down to the purple, it really looks like it's like glowing. There's a glow mm -hmm. effect to it. This piece is just, oh, I, I can't. <laughs> Landscape artists blow my mind. <laughs> time every time every time i just i think what you guys do is just so amazing One, two, three. Mm -hmm. and i really love like the blended sky in that one as well all of the blending is really well done oh and there's even flowers down in the foreground we didn't even get to see that very much yeah I, I wonder what the the little thing next to on the cat's piece, what that kind of like. Yeah, the, the little, I'm telling you, the little dude in the helmet. Yeah, it's really it really what it looks like to me. Like a little baby, like astronaut or something. Mm hmm. It's so great. So yeah. great. Guys, make sure you get your votes in. I'm going to go vote right now for my favorite piece. I think you should all go to artbattle.com, get your votes in, so we can see who is going to be tonight's winner of Art Battle Portland. Oh my gosh. Did you see a on Corinne's the little um, spout? <laughs> I was wondering at the top. Yeah. I was wondering, I was going to comment and was going to say, I wonder if there's going to be anything out the front top of it. <laughs> I'm glad you said that because now I see it. <laughs> I love her drips though, in all seriousness, like the background, it is such a contrast to the texture within the foreground. And I love the color combination and her palette. Um, it, it's such a nice piece and mm -hmm. don't care what the subject is, it, it's painted well. It really is. There's even the little dimples on it, little cheek. Cheap yeah. Blush. <laughs> yeah, it's really great. It really is. And I really love that style of the bright, like kind of pop, um, you know, strong brushstroke. It bit. definitely is something that I have done within my art battle pieces. It's, I don't know, like it just draws people in. Mm -hmm. Totally. I'm excited to see who is Gosh. going to be winner here. Yeah, it's going to be a close one because. These are some pretty phenomenal pieces. I 
I do wish they had more pictures on Suzy Q's on the app. Maybe they just haven't got them in yet. Kareen's piece is already getting bid on, so I am happy for her. Mm -hmm. Do they all have bids? Um, almost. Almost all. Yeah. And that's fantastic. It's such a great way to support your artist. Art makes the, girl, the world go round. I definitely think it is the highest form of art there is. I mean, over music. And I know a lot of people say music is the highest form of art. But I, I think that there is definitely barriers when it comes to music as far as like different languages and being able to understand and art you don't have to have words you don't have to have sound you you purely rely on your vision mm -hmm. it can speak to every single person no matter your background or where you're at in the world so definitely support these artists and go vote go bid on the paintings if you are not there in person like i said earlier um, it is flat rate shipping, so you definitely are getting a huge deal there because especially these last pieces and Bernadette's opening piece, um, those are larger canvases. So you definitely want to go and bid on those and get them for a steal. I always tell people too, like it is the number one way to get original artwork from your favorite artists for a fraction of the price of what their studio work is. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like Art Battle has shaped any of your studio work? Do you feel like it, um, I mean, I've always been, I've always been a lover of color, um, but I feel like Art Battle has definitely driven me more towards that space and kind of like how you said being able to tastefully um you, you know put on an entire rainbow on a piece and right. um being able to use all of those colors and uh, i've actually been leaning a little bit more into neutral tones as well kind of intermittent in my rainbow colors because that actually gives a lot of depth it does um, it, like balance yeah. Mm hmm balance definitely because when you're looking at something even if it's a super saturated thing because of the way light and shadow works the entire thing isn't going to be highly saturated you're going to get those um, desaturated shadows and the difference between warm and cool tones and i don't know just really trying to fine tune my my color yeah I mean, I'm just kind of blown away by what the artist made tonight. And Liesl is definitely on top of my list for for artists tonight. She really blew me away by landscapes. And I don't know if I'm just partial to landscapes because I don't do them often. I can do them. But what she created tonight in both rounds is just phenomenal. Um, but then again, everybody is phenomenal who does art battles. So... Mm -hmm. And I know that auctions are about to close in about 13 minutes or less. So you definitely want to go and get your bids in, get the last of your votes in, support your favorite artists. Such a great night. So much fantastic art was made. I hope all of the artists are so proud of what they've done because it's it's quite a feat it is a hard fought 20 minutes it is and i know that next month is the regionals again for the pacific northwest and i am super excited to find out who is also going to be joining the regionals and the talent in this group coming up is is just phenomenal i know that there are so many amazing artists that are, have made it to regionals. Um, one of them is my good friend. Um, another one went to the same schools I went to. So wow. I think that it's gonna be, it is going to be a night not to miss. Yeah, especially the regionals. There's something, I mean, Art Battle is already such a great event, but then you go to the regionals and it's just, I it's mean, like, it's a it's powerhouse of artists. Yeah, it's definitely the cream of the crop. It's and that I would say too, like I think you should buy original art at Art Battle 
any event, but that is the night if you were to ever buy something like that and nationals i think you are just getting outstanding artists and there's no there's no bad paintings there's no like i don't know like the art produced at those championship rounds is just amazing mm -hmm. yeah it really is it's gonna be dif difficult for the audience to decide and as an artist who participated in the final round, this moment is so like these these minutes before the winner is announced just stretch on forever. I know, especially when you're a competing artist, it's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Don't make me wait. And I know that <laughs> when he um MCs for Seattle, he is the best at dragging stuff out and i told him we had that dinner before regional last year and i was like okay you need to like not drag it out so much you just need to come out rip the band-aid off and say it you <laughs> don't keep us in suspense <laughs> and then he, he mentioned that last year at the regionals and he was like and i'm still going to give it give you guys suspense that's funny yeah he's the best and the worst because of I that reason <laughs> Oh man, I do miss Austin. Yeah. Is he still MC in the Seattle? Um, I actually have not been to um a recent Seattle event because they've been doing it at the Armory. Yeah. And I haven't been to an event at the Armory yet. Neither have I. I. The Armory is going, I think that the regional championship is going to be at the Armory in Seattle, um, which is super cool. Mm -hmm. I it's going to be a great space, tons of room. I don't, I believe if I'm correct, it shares like, it's like the, basically the convention center for, um, the Kraken, the, the hockey team, if I'm correct. I think you might be right. I don't know though. I know it's all part of that Seattle center area, but I don't know for sure if it's, um, if it's that arena or if it's just nearby there. I have no idea. Are you going to the regionals in March? I I don't know yet. My got four kids, Janae. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a lot of stuff on my plate right now. It's, I totally get that. I'd love to go. I really would. Um, and I'm hoping I can go, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. I will never say no, but I cannot promise either. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I feel that. But yes, if you guys are interested in going to the Pacific Northwest Regional Championship, I believe it is on March 5th um, at the Armory in Seattle. I don't know the address. So just look up the Armory in Seattle and you yep, should be- I'm sure you can find tickets to that on, oh. at the Armory. You can find it at artbattle.com. Um, you can search Facebook for the event there. Yep. It's all over the internet. And you are, you are on top of it, Janae. <laughs> I love it. Um, uh, my app is acting funny. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. These moments are always so great, like just like waiting, and everybody's like, I want to know who the winner is. Mm -hmm. And it's always great to see like the artists when they win. Like I wish that they would have all of the artists up like where the announcers are going to be so that you can see like the pure joy and excitement on their face. Yeah, but then you'd have to see the reaction of all the other artists that didn't win. And that might be a little, <laughs> I don't oh, know. No, maybe. I think that, I mean, like I was saying, like Art Battle is such a community, like and all the artists want you to do well, right? Like we're all rooting for you. Mm -hmm. So you might get, I don't know, I've never met a bad apple at Art Battle before, but yeah. you could get that, so maybe that's why they don't do it. <laughs> like, what is that? Uh, gosh, what's that movie? Uh, it's with Sandra Bullock where she's a like grungy police officer. <laughs> she, like the congeniality. <laughs> <laughs> where she's like fighting over the crown <laughs> oh, with the flowers <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, that could man. be bad. it's better that they're not all up there together 
No, I think you're right though. Every time, like even, you know, I've definitely, I've never won a regionals and I've lost more than I've won. So um, there's that moment of like, the name is called and it's not you, but it's like, just a moment of like, oh man, I didn't win. But then it's like, oh, but they won. And so yeah. like, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. It's so great. I just love Art Battle and the community that it brings. And like I was saying earlier, if you are an artist watching and you have not competed in Art Battle, I don't care where you are in the world, they do this worldwide. As long as far as I know, they still do it worldwide, but I'm not sure. But I at least know that they do it in, I think they do it in Canada, US, everywhere. There is places everywhere. You just search Art Battle, find your closest location, apply, and go do a 20 minute painting. It is exhilarating. It's so fun. I absolutely love it. I've never met somebody who doesn't love it. Um, mm -hmm. It's a great way to like promote yourself. It really is. It's a great place to network as well. Um, like you said, you're not only are you there with a bunch of other artists, but you're also there with a bunch of people that love and appreciate art in the community and in your local community. So like, it's exactly. just such a great place to be. It's huge. And like I was saying, like uh, people have watched online while I've competed and I have like followed me on Instagram and they're like devout followers and they like all my stuff that I put up and comment, like interact it because Art Battle is a community for artists and art lovers, both. Mm -hmm. Even if like an art lover drags somebody who's not like into art, like after this event, you will turn into an art lover. I yeah. promise that because it, what you witness done in 20 minutes is just mind blowing. Mm -hmm. Every time I have not been to a single art battle or watched an art battle online where I'm just not like, oh, just, oh my gosh, amazing. <laughs> All right, it looks like they might have already announced oh. the winner. So, should we give a little drum roll and say who won this art battle? You want to say it? I'll give you the drum roll. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> two, three. Our art battle winner tonight is Liesel. She did both the abstracts and she is going on to regionals next month. Make sure you guys support them next month. All of the artists are going to be so amazing and you guys will not be disappointed with the lineup. And I'm just so happy for Liesl. What she produced in 20 minutes for both of these rounds is just phenomenal. I, I'm blown away and I'm so happy that she won. She yeah. had my vote. She had your vote. Yeah, in absolutely. Put it for Bigfoot in the first round. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She was absolutely spectacular, fabulous work in both rounds, and um, definitely a hard-fought win because there was some there was some amazing talent here tonight. I agree. All right. Well, I think I think that's it for us, Janae. I think our job is done commentating, and I hope you guys enjoyed our banter and our our talking because we talked a lot. We so sure I did. Enjoy it. <laughs> Uh, well, I had a pleasure. I hope you enjoyed too, Brittany. It was I, it was great. I loved it. And I'm so happy to have been able to do this live with you. And I can't wait for next month at regionals and what is going to come. Yep. It's going to be All very right. exciting. That regionals is definitely not going to be one you want to miss. So buy those at tickets. March 5th. There. Yep. Or be a good one. All right, then. Well, I'm going to log off. I hope you guys have a fantastic Saturday evening and an awesome Sunday. Rejuvenate for Monday and your new work week. And we will see you guys back at the next live art battle. Oh, look, oh. there she is on stage. Yeah, I guess Probably. they hadn't pronounced it yet, but <laughs> there she is. She's talking and they already announced. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> We're like, okay, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> oh, look at her. She's so happy amazing i wonder what the prize was it looks like she got a little goodie bag there how exciting no i've never had a goodie bag Susanna got secret swag i don't even know what it is <laughs> secret I'm swag wow it. very cool all thank right thank you guys both so much for tonight of Absolutely. course you guys have a great evening you too all right bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.
All right. I'm out too. Have a lovely evening. Goodbye. How do I leave this? <laughs>